Good evening, Yorktown, and welcome to the Town Board Work Session for October 12th, 2021. If everyone can please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, and if we could all please join me in a moment of silence. And we, tonight, we keep in our thoughts and prayers, Gil Kaufman and his family. Yes. Mr. Kaufman, for those who didn't know him, had the privilege of knowing him. Uh, Mr. Kaufman was a Korean War veteran and a tremendous advocate for the seniors of Yorktown serving on the Senior Advisory Committee and also uh, running the uh, AARP chapter of Yorktown. Yes. Unfortunately, Mr. Kaufman passed away uh, just yes. yesterday. And we keep him in our thoughts and prayers, as well as his family, especially his wife, Annie, uh, who, again, also a longtime Yorktown resident herself. Yes. He passed away on Sunday, Matt. Sorry. Excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Sunday. Thank you. We're just a, we're just a day off because it was Columbus Day. And by the way, happy belated Columbus Day, everybody. Yes. Right. Yes. Happy belated Columbus Day. Very good. Uh, introductions quick. Supervisor Matt Slater, I'll just go around the screen as I see everyone. We have Councilwoman Alice Roker. We have Councilman Tom Diana. Councilman Ed Lafterman. Councilman Vishnu Patel. We have our town clerk, Diana Quast, and our town attorney, Adam Rodriguez. Just a couple of uh, quick announcements. I just wanted to remind everyone that tomorrow is 1013. Uh, the Yorktown Police Department will be holding an award ceremony at 6 p.m. at the Granite Knolls. Uh, we are looking forward to participating in that. Uh, that is an award ceremony to recognize uh, uh, our residents uh, who have been very supportive of the police department and who've done uh, outstanding work in partnership with the police department, but also introduced new officers to the, of the police department that we haven't had a chance to since, mm. since the COVID pandemic started, uh, as well as recognize uh, some of our retirees uh, and, of course, uh, recognize some of our officers who've received promotions in the last nearly two years, again, which we have not been able to do uh, because of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Kichewan Water District, there will be a hydrant flushing uh, tomorrow, which is thir uh, excuse me, Thursday the 14th. Uh, so if you live in the Kichewan Water District, again, that'll be uh, Thursday the 14th, and that includes hydrants on Pinesbridge Road, Shadeen, Siska Drive, and Barnes Road. That'll be between the hours of 8 a.m to 5 p.m. barring any unexpected emergencies. This of course was emailed out. Uh, and so if you are not receiving our public notices, I encourage you to sign up to do so and also check out the town's website and social media channels. Also this weekend, 1016 is our outdoor movie in partnership with the Jefferson Valley Mall, uh, part of our Halloween cel celebration. They'll be showing a nightmare before Christmas uh, and you can register. Uh, <laughs> You can That's register <laughs> on the Parks and Rec Department website. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> My daughter loves that one. Exactly. It's, a, it's, everyone's a, it's definitely a fan favorite, without a doubt. Uh, also, we have Fall Farm Weekend coming up yet again. It's our second annual Fall Farm Weekend, uh, which will be the 23rd and 24th of October. Uh, so mark your calendars. Your town's got, I believe, some of the best, if not the best, farms around. We're very proud of our agriculture heritage. Uh, and uh, we want to advocate and, of course, raise up these great natural assets. And so there are, once again, eight participating farms. Uh, there are some uh, wonderful events that will be associated with them. Our friends at Wilkins Fruit Farm, uh, in conjunction with the Chamber, are going to be hosting a pie-eating contest. Uh, we will also have a pumpkin painting contest, which was which is being hosted down at Fable Farm, uh, down in, in the Kichewan area. And our friends over at Hilltop Hanover are hosting their first uh, view, brew, and barbecue event, which is also a fundraiser for Hilltop Hanover. Uh, and it's a great mm -hmm. time for everyone. I think we have a map, a farm map, correct? If John is. Okay, good. In case yes, we do. Don't know. And again, anyone looking, uh, we also have the most uh, southern commercial producer of maple syrup here in Yorktown, uh, our good friend, Bry Hart. Okay. Um, and he also has, I believe, some of the best honey you can find. We have uh, a cider mill, Thompson's Cider Mill, also down in Kichwan. So a lot of great things to to explore and celebrate in the town of Yorktown and Fall Farm Weekend again, the 22nd and 23rd uh, of October. Tomorrow, October 13th, there is another e-waste event outside of the Yorktown Police Department. So if you have anything 
Uh, for e-waste, please bring it over to the police department and you'll see our refuse and recycling staff out there providing a great service for the residents of Yorktown. And I also just wanted to thank the Chamber of Commerce uh, for the street fair this past weekend. Uh, it, was a, it was a terrific event that celebrated our past, our present, and our future. And I do wanna thank all the organizers and volunteers who made it a terrific community celebration. With that, we will almost right on time, go to our first subject matter tonight. Uh, we have Coco Farms of Shrub Oak. This is the new gas station uh, that is uh, nearly ready for operation at the corner of yeah. Barger, right? Right, Councilman Diana? Barger. You got it, you got it Supervisor. Barger Street and Barger. Route 6. <laughs> John Taggart uh, is <laughs> chomping at the bit right now to say it wrong. I can tell. Yeah, I know he is. I know he is. <laughs> um, uh, and I think we have Danny Porco and some of his uh, associates that are joining us tonight to update the board on a signage issue. They have a proposed change in their sign. So I'm going to turn it over to our town clerk, Diana Quast. We don't see Mr. Porco on yet, do we? I don't see him. I saw him earlier, but not now. I do see a, a Gabriel, um, a Jaden, a Jeff, and a Klaus, but I think they're for other things. I think Jeff is with uh, the next item. So, Does John want to talk about that? John, do you want to just bring us up to speed on the, on the Cocoa Farms sign change that they've come to the town board over i can talk about it um i don't have the new drawing if you do any one of you guys yeah we all mm -hmm. got it let's see what we have here uh yeah uh, let me see uh, let me try to bring it up real quick i have i have the old one but i can talk i can talk through it no i have it i have it okay so basically, um, I think this is uh, Co uh, Coco Farms is the Barger Street gas station. Used to be Power Test. Used to be Getty. Get it. As you all know, you approved it uh, sometime in uh, about a year ago, and then went ahead and approved their sign plan. Subsequent to that, uh, you did spend some time on the monument sign, which you, and that is the that's the new um, proposal. This is the new one here. Yes, in a little bit, I can put up the old proposal if you care to. <clears throat> so the uh, the old proposal had the whole sign scheme, including the canopy and this building sign, which would, which would go on the building, obviously. Okay. Uh, if you allow me to share my screen. I should be able to share yours now. Okay. All I have to do is find it, right? You're being punished because you said barger wrong. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> you want to explain the, the difference between the two? Oh, yeah, you got see if I can just hold on a second. Magic Quadrant, Meeting Solutions. What did I do? I like that. Okay. Oh, an agenda. There you Ooh. go. Do you see that? Okay. Yes. Yeah. That, that's the sign, building sign that you approved. Right. Okay. And if you look down here, you can see that it's 31 square feet, and it encompasses this square. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good so evening. I'm, I'm, I made it in. Okay. All right. There's Danny. Yeah. So I, I apologize. I've, I've been trying to get in, but uh, thanks, know, Danny. Went wrong. Yeah. Great to see you. How's everybody okay. doing? We're good. good. We're good. So John, John Tegeter is just showing us the original proposal for the sign. Which yes, is, I see. I see. He's doing a great job. I, I, you know, I might <laughs> just take a seat back and uh, listen. <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to hand it off to you. So th this is the original one that was approved in March of this year. Okay. Uh, That's correct. The, it is square. Previous... It's 31 square feet. Mm -hmm. And now uh, I'm going 36. to 36. So the well, previous was... the previous approved sign for the building was a six by six, 
which came out to be about 36 square feet okay. in total. Uh, we're in front of you tonight for a change of sign. So since, since we had filed, um, you know, Clover Farm has gone some uh, re, uh, reconstruction of image and layouts and stuff like that. So here is the new proposed sign that we have. And um, John, I'm, I'm not sure if I can, because I ended up getting on my cell phone. So I can't yeah, share I can, my I can screen. Share it. I, can, I can do it. I can do it. I got it right here. I like it. The new one better. <clears throat> There's, that, is that the new one, Danny? That's the new one. Correct. So my, my yeah. sign uh, manufacturer and fabric fabricator and installer submitted this for permitting use. So we filed it as to show the board what the change will look like. So as she filed it, she's based it, based it on a square sign, which comes out to be, um, uh, comes out to be five, one three by ten feet long wide and she labels it at 53 square feet right but if you take it if you take that sign and break it down it the actual square square footage of it is a lot less than that for for instance the actual the 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 logo above the coca farm name it comes down to be 12.54 square feet and okay. the coca farm uh, lettering uh, word all together comes out to be about 15 square feet. I mean, uh, 27 point, no, 15 square feet in a total of 27.54. I, I kind of like, like this one better. better. Me too. Yep. It's great. I mean, I did right. too. Yeah. Uh, can I ask you a question? Is this a trademark or just a name uh, for the business? Well, it's, it's, it's a trademark for, mark for the business. Okay. So, so, so that's the actual uh, sea store chain that Coca Farm has been uh, running under. So we have about uh, uh, ten locations so far. So, you know, going forward, that's the that's the branding logo for it, an image. That looks uh, much better. I, yeah, yeah, I like this one. Kind of, kind of puts your brand out there, and and uh, right. to be quite honest with you, that that whole site is looking beautiful. It has been little to no disturbance, from what I can see here, see yeah. or anything I've heard from anybody. Yeah, um, it's been a, a pretty uh, hard uh, uh, project, you know, based on previous ones that I've done. You know, we've been encountering a lot of uh, material delays and oh, yeah. workmanship <laughs> delays, so it's been a little bit of a, a challenge, but. Yeah, we're getting through it, and uh, we're looking forward to get the uh, place uh, at the finish line. Yeah, good. Let's get a grand Which opening. Is coming, going. It's coming soon. <laughs> so the, the 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 idea here is to, you know, gas station, and and then this looks like a little country store. You know. Yes, yeah. correct. That's so, the look that we're going for, Mr. Yeah. Yeah, I like this one better. If John's okay with it. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. yeah. I hey, think even more, even more just attractive. so the board even just so the board uh, knows that the town code actually breaks down to be one square foot per linear feet of building length plus 0.25 square feet of setback and okay. front front setback and we're about 89 feet from Barger. Did I say that right? You, you did, Danny. Right, Danny. Danny. Oh, people don't. Go. We're not going to mention any names, JT. <laughs> I'm getting it. <laughs> oh, he's okay. getting it because of you, Tommy. <laughs> and then how much is the distance between pumping station and this building? Is it by rain? People have to just rush in there from one to the other, or there is a canopy or anything? It, 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 there's a canopy over the dispenser, the fuel and dispenser island. No, you don't I'm get back up and fill up the gas and go in the store and come back. Okay. Yeah, I think um, I think I'm good with it as well. I think it looks great. So, are there any objections, or does it? Uh, we do have a a resolution provided by yeah. the planning department that I can read in, so that they yeah. can move on with their work. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah. How about the architectural uh, group? You know, uh, do they are they happy? Well, they Not were happy with the other one. Yeah. Yeah, they, they have this one they haven't seen yet. This they one, did approve, they, they, 
They did. This will go to it. them afterwards, typically, when they are processing their building department permit. Unless, unless you care to hear from them, you can send it to them. Well, I think if they're going to see it anyway as part of their building yeah. depart department approval, then yeah, this, this is really about see the the uh, design is is really not different. It's just taken out of a box and broken out into yeah. channel letters. Right, exactly. I know that they prefer right. channel letters uh, over uh, box signs, so they'll be uh, should be happy with that. The fonts are the same. The girl and the logo is the same. So. Uh, it's really just for you in terms of um, its overall size, really, is what this is mostly about. And then there and is no LED, LED lights or anything else, right? This is only just a return, and there'll be some light. I like the clock, you know? Nobody nobody has a clock. I like the clock. All right, so we're good. So then I have a resolution from the planning department. Uh, and I can read it as follows. Uh, this is a resolution adopted by the town board. The town of York County, it's meeting held on October 12th, 2021. Whereas New York Fuel Dis uh, Distributors, LLC, New York Fuel, or the applicant filed an application to the town board of the town of Yorktown proposing to redevelop the instant parcel known as the Getty Gasoline Filling Station number 6712 Getty Station, which is located on certain real property located south of Route 6 at 3700 Barger Street and owned by Power Test Realty Company, Jericho, New York, also known as the tax map as section 16.07, block one and lot 43. The property which is situated within the Seaport Zoning District and whereas New York Fuel in order to facilitate the redevelopment of the existing Getty Station submitted an application to the, plant, to the town board of the town of Yorktown for a special use permit for a gasoline filling station pursuant to the town code section 300-46 dated August 23rd, 2019. And whereas on October 20th, 2020, the town board adopted a resolution approving the application of New York Fuel Distributors LLC for a special permit for the redevelopment of the project on the instant parcel, which proposed four new fuel pumps with a total of eight fueling stations, all covered by a new 2,310 square foot canopy on the westerly portion of the property and a new building housing a convenience store. And whereas on March 9, 2021, the town board adopted a resolution approving the application of New York Fuel Distributors LLC for final signage plans for approval. And whereas the signage plans included, among others, a building sign, which was of an area of 31 square feet. And whereas New York Fuel Distributors LLC has submitted a revised building sign plan dated May 14, 2021, which requests approval of a modified, I think, uh, which requests approval of a modified building sign which is of an area of 53 square feet. And whereas the town board reviewed the amended building sign plan and determined that the building sign shown on the plan is not disproportionate to the building facade, does not impose negative visual impact as it is in the same location as the original sign, but utilizes channel letters as part of the sign, which mitigates the appearance of mass on the facade and further finds that the building sign would be aesthetically consistent with the surrounding neighborhood and streetscape. Whereas six, seven, excuse me, whereas section 300-46Q of the zoning code authorizes the town board for good cause shown to vary any of the specific special permit criteria set forth in section 300-46. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the town board that the requested amendment of the proposed building sign is hereby approved and be it further resolved that the applicant must obtain a signed construction permit from the building department in accordance with the requirements set forth in this resolution and the associated signage plan cited herein. Motion. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Mr. Porco, good job. Thanks. Good. As always, thank you very much. Looking thank forward thanks. to getting thank it open. You. Yep. Same here. Ho hopefully, I figure about mid-November. We're, we're trying to shoot for so oh, good but we'll, we'll keep everybody updated as we get closer excellent Cigar, cigars and champagne for all <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll keep that in mind except maybe alice i don't know how she'd look smoking a cigar <laughs> i will try okay wine some white wine maybe okay yeah. all right mr no porco thank, thank you, you so very much. much keep up yeah, the good work night appreciate it Bye. thank you thank good you night. Bye. Thank you. And thank you to our, our, our planning department for their great job on that. We're going to go over to our next item. Uh, we have a proposal for a bridge replacement design um, regarding Baptist Church Road. 
And so we will welcome our friends from DEP. And I don't know if our highway superintendent is joining us. Is Dan gonna join us on this one? Dan is un, oh, sorry, I'll stop sharing. Dan is unable to join us, but he is okay. watching. Okay. In fact, he texted me earlier. Let's see, he did text me earlier. Here it is. Okay. I'm, I'm here, guys. All right, Dan. Dan. I'm, I'm listening in. Great. Dan the man. Dan. Thanks, Dan. So I think we're gonna welcome Jeff from DEP. Jeff, are you there? Yes, I am. This is Jeff Bussey. How are hey, you? Jeff. Thanks Hello, for Jeff. joining us tonight. Appreciate okay. it. Okay, yep, no problem. Um, let me share my screen. We have a short presentation. Great. Okay. Jeff, do you have anyone else joining you tonight? Um, Ed Sprague from DEP's uh, planning department should be on the line as well. Uh, I'm well, not sure if he's on the line, but <laughs> he should be. I don't have him under anything unless he's under a different name that's not marked on here. Okay. He, he might have had some, um, some connection problems. He had mentioned to me he might have some connection problems, so he wasn't sure if he was going to join, but we okay, can. Okay, I'll watch out for him. Yep, that sounds good. And Diana, if you can also just watch out for, for uh, Dave Paganelli. I just texted him to make sure that he knew that we were discussing this tonight. Okay, so this is for uh, contract Crow 530B for the replacement of Baptist Church Road Bridge. Uh, location is just at the northern tip of the New Croton Reservoir, uh, which and the bridge spans over Hunter Brook in that area. The bridge lies between roads Croton Ave and Hunter Brook Road. Okay. And this is just a little overlay of our existing site conditions. We have a very narrow bridge, you know, only 10 foot lanes that was built in 1903. To the north, we have a private driveway that is right in the construction area of our project. We mm -hmm. will maintain uh, will maintain access to that driveway at all times. We have utilities for that driveway and the residents up at the top of the hill over in this area in the north. Various rock outcroppings. Anyone that knows this area knows that there's very poor sight distance going over this bridge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to the south we have our boat area number eight, and we have a pull off area which would be used as a staging area for during construction. Here's just a couple of pictures of the site. You see the pavement in poor condition, narrow roadway, the private driveway, um, the rock outcroppings. And in this picture on the bottom, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but in this yep. yeah. area to the right over here is that pull off area, which we'll be using as the staging area. Okay, so this is a busy screen, but, um, but basically we are going to be doing a full replacement of the existing bridge with a new precast concrete arch and new wing walls, uh, both of which will be tinted, uh, it'll be tinted concrete. It'll be, the new structure will be slightly wider than the existing. The existing is about 20 feet wide uh, for the roadway to 10 foot travel lanes. The new bridge will be about 28 feet wide, which includes two 12 foot travel lanes and two two foot shoulders, one on each side. Mm -hmm. Uh, since we are widening the bridge slightly, we're going to introduce two retaining walls. There's one retaining wall that's going to be placed here and one retaining wall that's going to be re uh, placed in the upper corner over there. Uh, those will be cast in place. We will be utilizing the existing granite stones on the bridge, on the existing bridge and incorporating those into the new design uh, we'll be cutting the granite stones and placing them on the top of the wing walls and on top of the bridge, similar to how it is now. And uh, those will be uh, you know, cleaned, obviously, before we put them out there. Uh, site restoration includes uh, landscaping with uh, native species, 
uh, determined by our you know, in-house groups. Uh, the staging area will be seated and the uh, guide rail will be extended. We will be placing uh, low growing shrubs in the four corners of the bridge as to not to impede uh, any sight distance. And, uh, and we will be uh, planting some, uh, some trees in the area as well, but uh, the trees will be off the roadway, off from the side of the road so that they will not impede any sight distance, you know, as it is now. Uh, this, these are our town approvals that we have applied for. We sent in a permit application for the MS4 stormwater permit, the wetland permit, and a tr the, tree, uh, the tree permit. And we also submitted our stormwater pollution prevention plan. And we mailed our hard, hard copies uh, to the town board just uh, last week. So you should be getting them if you don't have those yeah. already. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, we have a rendering of you know, what the new structure would look like. You can see our granite capstones you know, running along. Here's one of those retaining walls that I was mentioning yeah. you know, in one of the corners over there. And you know, we, we didn't have too much time to, to put together a full presentation for you today. I know we don't have a lot of time, but you know, we just wanted to give you a sense of, uh, of what we're going to be doing out there. That okay. definitely needed to be done. Oh, it's yes. great. Yes. It's, uh, How long will it take? The construction duration in total is two years. OK. Uh, Okay, um, the road will be closed. We're going to implement a detour. Um, the road will be closed probably for a good portion of those two years, probably about a year and a half, you know, a year and five months that the uh, roadway will be closed. Okay. Uh, we're looking to, you know, right now we're at 90% complete. We'll have that completed by the end of October. And then we have to go through our legal and law reviews and we plan to bid the project at the end of next year so we're looking at a notice to proceed for a contractor around July of uh, 2023. Okay, so this isn't something that's gonna happen within the next six months then? That is correct. Okay. Yeah, that was my, that, Alice asked the questions I was gonna ask is the starting time and how long it's gonna be closed and if uh, detour were going to be uh, enacted by you folks. Right. Right. Yes. And yeah, we will have the detour. Um, it'll be the southern loop uh, going Croton Ave, 129, a little bit on 129, and then up Hunter Brook Road again. Mm -hmm. You said that you're going to be manning that or you're going to need to coordinate with the police department? Well, we'll, we'll implement the detour. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if, if you require any coordination with the police department or how that works, but it will be a uh, you know, full closure. And yeah, we can talk about yeah where the road will be closed. There's a large stretch of roadway to the south that is um, you know there's no residents and there's not really any you know there might be a couple of pull-offs for you know walkers or bikers. But you know we're going to be closing you know that bike area, um, the boat area. I'm sorry, uh, the boat area will be closed during construction, um, so there won't be any access to that. We'll reopen that after construction is complete. All right, Dan, you know what? Um, I'm wondering if you could, would, would contact the residents in that area and it's simply just going to uh, Kim and she'll give you a, so that we can notify them um, because we, we now have to send their applications out on, for referral. Correct. Uh, uh, what is the limits on, uh, you know, in the load on the big truck can go through or this is the, you know, some restriction what the um, uh, on the existing bridge, are yeah. you asking? Yeah. There's the, the, the bridge is not posted for load. So yeah. any legal load can currently go over the bridge. When we replace the structure, obviously the whole site is going to be uh, closed off and we'll be working from both sides. We'll probably have a crane on both sides. Um, you know, the prefabricated arch, we talked with the manufacturers, you know, there are routes that they can take to get to this bridge. You know, we know it's a little mm -hmm. tight with the corners and the tree envelopes. Uh, they actually ran the route and are confident that they can get, um, you know, the pieces that we need to the bridge. You know, I think the uh, arches do come in pretty big pieces when they uh, do that precast arch. Are you able to, um, are you able to coordinate with the volunteer fire department? Because I know they were looking to do a, a dry hydrant in this area. Is that something that, that could be discussed or considered? 
Um, well, we, we can definitely discuss or consider anything. Yeah, that's um, that's not a problem. We we did not coordinate with the fire department. Um, yeah, I was not aware that they had a need to uh, to put anything out there. Um, you know, I guess the work would have to be within the project limits. You know, with whatever they were looking for. Um, but if uh, you know, if there was a contact or something that you can send our way. Yeah, you know, if, we can, if you can just have a conversation. I mean, I know it was something that they were looking for in the area. So mm -hmm. I don't know if it's worth it, if it's an opportunity since you're already going to be doing some work out here. But if, right. if we can just coordinate a, at least a conversation with the fire department so that mm -hmm. they understand the, the scope of work. And if it works great, you know, if that's something that we can coordinate. Terrific. I'll get not, that. We can have the conversation. I'll get that going with the fire advisory board then. Thank you, Councilman Diana. I know that um, Dave Paganelli, our highway superintendent, is uh, is on. Um, Dave, anything that you want to add to to this conversation? Actually, I just tuned in. So, have we the most important thing with respect to these projects, as we're seeing on Underhill and on Hunter Brook, is what length of time are we expecting this road to be closed? Two years. That's, that's the two years. A, about two a year and years? a half. Yeah, year a good a good year and a half uh, that the that the bridge will be closed. Yeah, the, the whole duration of the project is about two years, but unfortunately, most of the work is going to be, um, you know, with the with the bridge closed to do the replacement. Um, the water in this area is very deep. Um, you know, we have to install coffer dams, turbidity curtains, and, you know, there's, uh, there's a significant amount of work that has to go into, yeah. uh, you know, putting this new structure in. What would the and deep what, what, look like? What kind of traffic with respect to our roadways? Because these are not, you know high mobility road areas, you know, Hunter mm -hmm. Brook Road. Will you be approaching this intersection from the Cortland side or will you be approaching this bridge from the Yorktown side or you would mention two cranes? So I'm assuming that you'll be coming from both directions. We, we will be coming in from both directions, yeah, to work on this bridge. Yeah, that, that is correct. Um, you know, the, the path to the south, it's long, windy with, you know, a lot of tree covers. Um, yeah, it might be a little bit easier coming in from the other way. Uh, I'm not sure which route the manufacturer took to get to the site. They were confident that they could get to the site. We were actually considering floating in the pieces, you know, by barge, but, you know, they're confident that they can get the pieces in, you know, with the existing roadway network, you know, without doing any changes to the surrounding area. So this is a precast um, segmented project, yeah. correct? Yes. Yep. This is a precast. This will be a precast bridge. Yep, precast arch. Okay. How many um how many pieces do you know of hands? I'm not sure. Um it could be coming in two pieces. I know that there will be a center pour. So we will be coming in from both sides, you know, putting the putting the structure together and then pouring a center pour, you know, to uh to connect the uh two halves together. Um so I believe it's only a few pieces, but you know, it, depending on the manufacturer, it, uh, yeah, we don't really dictate who the manufacturer will be, but uh, depending on the manufacturer, uh, it could be a little bit different. Okay, so my concern is this. I'm sure these are wide loads that yes. are coming. Um, being that Hunterbrook Road is about 20 feet wide, you know, mm -hmm. I would just be kept in the loop as to when you're planning on using our roads to get there so that we can close our roads to traffic at that time, because there's no way a wide load and a I uh, either a regular vehicle can make the pass on Hunter Brook. Gotcha. All right. Mm -hmm. and all the twists and turns you were mentioning earlier. Sure. Sure. Yeah. yeah. It is a very difficult site to get to. Yes. Um, yeah. 129 okay, so, is good, but <laughs> yeah, you're right. The, the local coordinate correct. And we don't, you know, we don't, don't jeopardize public safety. I don't, I don't see a problem with it. I just want to make sure that mm -hmm. we're all on the same page when, when we are, you know, taking in a wide load down. Sure. Hunter Sure, and yeah, we'll be keeping the town, uh, you know, in the loop every step of the way. Uh, you know, we'll you'll be one of our stakeholders, and you know, we'll be you know sending out notifications. We'll keep you in the loop the whole time. Okay, so we'll definitely do that. Good, thank you. Sure. So why don't we do this, Jeff? We'll um, we'll refer this out uh, mm -hmm. to all agencies uh, as is required, and then uh, we will set the public hearing. Uh, probably later in November. Okay. Um, Does that work for, for? Would that would that be the next step? Is the public hearing? Yeah. Yes. The public hearing mm -hmm. is required. 
Well, okay. you're going to have to contact the agencies, um, Jeff, as we go through this. That's not, it's our next step, but it's not your next step. Okay. Okay. So we'll work out that. Are we, those are details we doing a, your um, office. yeah, Dan. Are we doing a lead agency circulation on this one? We should. Or has that already been established? Uh, we, we did do the lead agency already, DEP. Uh, established lead agency. We sent that out uh, August 3rd. We sent that out for the lead agency determination. Okay. And, and I'm sorry, did you do, uh, I think our town attorney was asking, did you do an EAF on this already? And that's been also circulated, right? The, the lead the, agency? Yeah, the lead agency letter did have, have the write-up. Um, the, um, our uh, Bureau of our Environmental Planning, BIPA, they uh, are in charge of sending out the lead agency letter and they will be uh, sending out their determination after we hear back from, from you, the town. And we're also waiting to, um, to hear comments back from DEC. So we're waiting to hear those comments back uh, just before we finalize all of our environmental documents. Uh, but those, you know, we've sent out all of our permit applications already. So you know, hopefully we'll get feedback on everything uh, you know, once that's started. Okay. Very good. Any other questions from the board? Nope. Uh, I just wanted quickly to our town clerk, Diana Quas, anything that you need on your end? Can we just vote to refer it out now? Sure. Make a motion to, to refer out the proposed Baptist Church Road bridge. All moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Thanks, everyone. Jeff. Appreciate it. Sure. Have a good night. You good too. Night. Okay. We're going to move on to our next uh, agenda item, which is the 3110 Radcliffe Drive Stormwater Management Permit. And we will welcome Amber Urban. Hello. Hello. Just Mr. Hi. Urban, there's Amber. Hi. How are you, Amber? Hi, Amber. Hi, Amber. Hi, Amber. Good. How are you? We're good. Doing, we're doing great, thanks. Why don't um, you, if you could just uh, introduce uh, yourself to the board and just talk about what you're trying to do over at your house. Sure. And just so you know, um, Michael Urban, who's also in here, he's my husband. He is going to um, come in in case I have to run if I hear my baby crying on the monitor. Yeah, <laughs> I un totally understand. Don't <laughs> worry. Understand that. Um, okay. So hi, everyone. I'm Amber Urban. Um, we live at 3110 Radcliffe. And we're looking to expand, or I should say, level our backyard. Mm -hmm. So we want to bring dirt in level it it'll end up being about 30 feet from the back of our house to about where our shed is and then from there it'll be graded um down like on a on a gradual slope and that's pretty much the whole project <laughs> how much dirt amber Do um you know? i need to double i think it's 425 cubic yards, yards. okay Okay, Dan, what do we have to do? Well, because of the uh, quantity of fill, this one's beyond my uh, administrative permitting limit. Okay. So we would have to, uh, so this will be a town board action. Okay, got it. And we've already heard from the planning board with no objections. Right. Uh, the conservation board stated as long as proper erosion control measures being taken, the board sees no adverse environmental impacts to it. That was all I saw in correspondence. Yeah, that, that we did discuss that at the at the conservation board meeting. Great. And everything was fine. Councilman Diana, do you want to add something? Amber, do you have any uh, uh, drawings or anything of this that with elevations and so forth for the so we, contiguous properties? We do. Um, okay. We do have the, the plan that our engineer made um, at the conservation Great. board meeting. They had a PDF that they were able to show. Mm -hmm. I don't have a PDF, um, but I think that I have like the actual piece of paper. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it though. You know, what, if you could, if you could up. get that to us, 
uh, and then I think we, we have the cap capabilities to make copies of that so that we can okay. take a look at just the elevations and so on and so forth so that, this, that we okay. can familiarize you, ourselves with how much it's going to be from base to where you're going to end up. Sure. Do you even want me to show you like a picture of it? Hold it up right now where you'll just get it. Yeah, yeah, well, let's hold it up. Let's see what we can see. Uh, yeah, okay. let's see if we can see it. Okay. I think it's going to raise it about seven feet. Across about the seven feet? Yeah, I, I remember the our engineer said that. I think it's about seven feet. Is and it? it'll okay. gradually grade down. The grade, it won't grade onto our neighbor's properties or anything like that. Okay. So. <laughs> this is okay see it oh yeah there it is yeah so that's our property and i and that's the back of the house that this is the see, shed. Right? okay this is the shed. so from the back of the house shed, she said is about 30 feet it'll mm -hmm. be level and then um and then it'll be i i I can look at the email he sent me. I feel like he said it was like a two to one slope, I believe is what he said, but don't quote this me on that. Sounds um, about right. Okay, yeah. I think it's a two to one slope going down towards the back of the property. Um, okay. And then he said there's like a whole system that he has so that it doesn't go into our neighbor's yard. And um, just it's another- three erosion screens along the entirety of the back. So, it, you know, to hold, maintain the soil. Okay. And, um, we were not- we're far enough away from wetlands. I think it's 100 feet, but we're, I think, roughly 250 feet away, so that's not an issue. Um, another thing to just add is our neighbors on either side, they both have leveled their property already, mm -hmm. so we're pretty much just bringing our property up to meet where theirs is. Okay. Okay. And then you'll probably, I, I think what he has is a swale. Looks like he has a little swale put in there to where if any drainage will run off to the sides and head down towards the, uh, towards the buffer. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right, so Dan, you'll guide us on this one. <laughs> yes, and uh, you know, we'll go out there, we'll do a site visit and you know, just make sure we're coordinating the grading with the neighbors so there isn't any potential for, um, um, well, erosion we'll be looking at, but you know, even you know, accidentally trespassing onto neighbor's property. We want right, to right. Make sure that that, and you know, sometimes, depending on the level of cooperation with the neighbors, um, you might have a situation where grading onto their property ain't a bad thing, you know, to, to yeah, make they it look, Yeah. You know, so I, obviously their cooperation would have to be a part of that. Yes. Yeah. We have a very good relationship with our neighbors, so I'm, that's yeah. one piece I'm not worried about. <laughs> that works out good then. Yeah, How long do. have you guys lived here? We moved, um, we moved in February of 2019. Well, we're well, happy you found Yorktown, and thank you for choosing yeah. Yorktown. It's, yeah. a, it's a great neighborhood. I used to live right up the block, actually. Yes, Patty and we talk about you all the time. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Love Remember the neighborhood. Them? They're the mayor of, mayors of our street. <laughs> yes, they are. Yep, without a doubt. Without so. a doubt. Well, that's great. Awesome. All right. Okay. Anything else, Dan, that we need to do here? We're good? I no, we're good. We're good on my end, and you know I'll help you guys put together a resolution. And like I say, we'll we'll go out there and visit the property, make sure there isn't anything. So sometimes the plans don't always tell the, the whole story, so we'll make sure yeah. that uh, we got it all covered. Appreciate it, Dan. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Dan. All right. Thank you, Amber. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you so much. Thanks, Mike. Good night. Good, good luck. night. Appreciate it. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So our next uh, topic of conversation, we're going to welcome a, a whole team of individuals from Toll Brothers. I think we have also David Cooper with us. David, hey, good everybody. evening. How are you? Good evening. How are you, Mrs. Supervisor? We're doing great. You want to you wanna introduce uh, your team tonight? Sure, sure. Good to see everybody. And just for the record, uh, my name is David Cooper. I'm a partner with the law firm of Zarin and Steinmetz, and, and we're here representing uh, Toll Brothers. Um, with me tonight uh, is, uh, let me just make sure everybody's on, Okay. Uh, James Fitzpatrick and Casey Devlin and Jack Lanneman from uh, Toll Brothers. Um, 
And Joe Rena, who is the uh, uh, project engineer, should be joining us as well, uh, as well as uh, my colleague Dominique Albano, who may still be in the. Uh, okay, gotcha. They're still uh, uh, in, in the uh, uh, welcome room. Um, so Toll Brothers is, is the contract vendee uh, to purchase a portion of the field home site uh, on Catherine Street. Um, Toll Brothers has, has been been interested in bringing a high quality residential product to Yorktown for, for uh, a number of years, um, and has has been presented with this site and believes it presents an excellent opportunity uh, for a, a new age oriented community. Um, what they contemplate is is 136 active adult uh, townhomes, and I'll let uh, uh, Casey and Jack go through uh, the vision and, and the process in, in, in a second. Um, Toll Brothers is here tonight because they're in the, the due diligence phase of, of, of this uh, proposal uh, and wanted to discuss the, the development concept with you and, and a couple of questions with your board um, to get your feedback. Uh, really, before putting, putting final pen to paper and, and you know, preparing a petition, et cetera, um, really wanted to know uh, if the town, uh, if this project is something that the town would, would, would like to see at the site. Um, we really thought it was important to, to meet with your board, particularly because we do envision uh, needing uh, to rezone the site probably to the RSP1 district. Right now it's, it's a, it's a uh, um, split district between the RSP3 and the R140. Uh, uh, um, and there's a prior approval on, on the site, as, as you may know, uh, for 108 uh, independent living units as well as uh, a uh, 96 bed skilled nursing uh, home as well as offices in the, in the uh, uh, um, field home, uh, the old field home building, the historic old building. Um, the nursing, uh, skilled nursing home was uh, developed, but the independent living uh, portion of that project was, was never uh, uh, pursued. Um, the reason why we think the RSP1 district makes the most sense is, is first of all, it allows age-oriented communities, which, which this would, would qualify as. Um, it certainly it presents uh, more than, than enough uh, density here. The, the maximum density would be 12, 12 units per acre. This is a 50-acre site, so 136 is well below uh, the maximum here that we think would, is, is going to be appropriate at this site. Um, but really, before we, we, we get into the, the, the specifics and the procedure, it's sort of the, the tail wagging the dog. Let me turn it over to, to, to Jack and Casey to take you through who Toll is, Toll's vision for, for the site, and, 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 and a little bit about the, the conceptual plan. And they're happy to, to, to kind of return to you, to you to talk about thoughts on procedure and you know, get, your, get your feedback and any questions you, you guys may have. But thank you again for uh, having us with you tonight, and we, we look forward to this. Thanks, David. We'll turn it over Thanks. to Jack and Casey. Sounds good. I'll share my screen if that's okay. Yeah, right. please do. Um, is this working? People see it? Mm -hmm. You see mm -hmm. it. Okay, great. <clears throat> so again, my name is Jack Lanneman. Um, I'm here with Casey Devlin and James Fitzpatrick as well. Um, so a little bit about who we are. We're very excited um, about the potential of, of building a, a community in Yorktown. Um, we are Toll Brothers, a Fortune 500 company. Um, we've been in business since 1967. Um, we operate in 24 states, so we're nationwide. Um, and for four years in a row, we have been ranked the number one home builder in the world by Fortune Magazine on their uh, world's most admired companies list, which we're very proud of. Um, and last year, we reported revenues of almost $7 billion, which was over 8,000 homes. And I'm telling you this not to brag, but to, to explain that, you know, we have the resources to stand behind our promises, to do what we say, to finish what we start, and to offer a 10-year limited warranty on every home we build, which is industry leading. Um, so we have been uh, operating in the New York market since the mid-1990s. We've built over 3,000 single family homes, townhomes, and condos in the New York market. Um, our uh, New York City operations are separate from our suburban operations. Um, we operate locally out of um, Danbury, Connecticut, where our Connecticut and New York office has about 80 employees building communities. Um, we employ local salespeople, local construction managers, and local um, trade partners to build our homes. 
we currently um, control about 750 home sites across the state. Um, and then we have what we think is a, a real advantage over a lot of other builders is our land development department. And that's uh, Casey Devlin. Um, so we entitle, we improve all of our land ourselves. We have engineers on staff. We have um, um, architects on staff. We have a huge staff of people that helps us build things efficiently and, um, and properly. So with that said, um, just to orient you a little bit. So um, the field home building, the, the historic building, if you can see my cursor, is in the bottom portion of this yellow highlighted um, site area. It's across Catherine Street from the Glassbury Court um, development, which is um, similar to what we're proposing. Um, the um, nursing facility is located um, just below it off the property. So what we're really talking about is this um, undeveloped property um, just next to the um, existing field home. And I'll turn it over to Casey and he can kind of talk you through the site plan here, which again, correlates to um, that same yellow area I showed you on the overview map. Good evening, everybody. I just, uh, I'll walk you through the site plan. Um, we are proposing to develop two parcels, um, the development footprint. Um, you're looking at spans two parcels uh, and combined uh, the sites just over 50 acres. We are proposing to construct 136 active adult, 55 and over townhome units in primarily three unit and four unit buildings with the community clubhouse and community pool. Our site plan uh, proposes two site entrances from Catherine Street uh, with a primary outer loop road and, and two intersecting streets with townhome units on, on either side. Um, this site generally slopes to the east away from Catherine Street. Um, so stormwater will be managed at the lower elevation of the site, just uphill of the wetland along the eastern property line, which is highlighted uh, in green. Um, to navigate some of this great change, we'll be proposing walkout units along the lower side of the roadways with regard to locations is this uh, how about the very dimension here behind the mansion and there was some you know proposal many years ago maybe i don't know uh, they wanted to do the same thing you know and behind is, is a existing building where they have a catherine street you know the nursing home or whatever and then there yeah, is there was a seabury so this is all the same complex but it's privately owned now right that's the complex. So that existing facility, if you can see my cursor is right here mm -hmm. on the lower left-hand corner of the page. And we are proposing to develop the wooded undeveloped portion yeah. Yeah, of the property. Any the same uh, uh, private profit making organization or some kind of a, uh, you know, Government or not, you know, I mean, the nonprofit, anything else involved here? No, it'll be uh, privately developed by Toll Brothers. Okay. Thank you, Casey. You can continue. In regard to utility services, um, there is an existing sewer main that runs through the property um, from Catherine Street out to Field Street to the east of our parcel. Um, we'll be proposing a connection to the sewer system um, to that main. We will have to relocate some of the sewer main. Um, it'll be in conflict with some of our development, um, which we don't see an issue with. Um, just an engineering detail we're gonna have to figure out. Um, we understand the Hunter Brook pump station will receive sewer flow from this project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we will need to investigate the capacity of that 
pump station and we plan on discussing that and investigating that further with the town engineer. Um, for water service, uh, we are proposing a extension through our road network um, through a loop system with two points of connection from Catherine Street. Um, as, as David mentioned, uh, we are in our due diligence phase of the project um, and we have identified two items that, that we wanted to discuss with the board. The, the first is an existing uh, soccer field that the Yorktown Parks and Recreation Department uh, uses now as a practice field for the soccer league. Um, we spoke to James Moderano, who's the superintendent of the Parks and Recreation Department uh, about some options for potentially relocating that soccer field uh, somewhere else in town. And uh, James actually has some other higher priority capital projects um, for the recreation department. Um, in lieu of relocating the field that he would like to discuss with us. So um, we plan on following up with him in the next week or two um, to explore some of those options further. And the second item uh, is the existing field home. And I'm gonna defer back to Jack to talk a little bit about that. And so we understand as part of the previous um, application that was, um, approved but but never built um the front portion of the field home building so the front sort of third was to be saved and the back um two-thirds was was going to be knocked down those are the, the older sections that are in somewhat disrepair um we wanted to to see if if saving that building that front portion of the building was still important to yorktown um we initially looked into potentially using it as a, as a clubhouse facility for our residents. We've determined that to not really be viable, um, partly due to its, its layout, its location, um, its age. Um, but if it's important to Yorktown to, to keep it, you know, we, we may be able to explore some other, um, some other avenues such as uh, the Field Home Association staying um, within that, that smaller footprint of a building, which may work for them. But I just wanted, we wanted to get your temperature on if you thought this was a building worth saving. Um, we, it's gonna need some work, but it is structurally sound in that, in that front section. I have been in that building and it is important to Yorktown history. So I think the, the, the initial plan to save the front portion of the building was really a smart plan I don't know what condition the back of it's in, but there's a story that goes along with that building. It initially was, I believe, a church. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm very familiar with this thing, you know, I mean, been to so many meetings, you know, Aaron, Mr. Aaron or something. And uh, I don't know what happened because those are the, you know, uh, number of units were less than here and all this thing, I forgot what it was, you know, but, uh, is this a, another company going to be yes. you know, leaving the, uh, the leading the business in you know, the construction and all that, or the same company was before? No, it's a different so, company. No, it's yeah. Okay. So we're told, brothers, we have this we have this property under contract from Field Home. Uh, we were not involved in the prior application. That was, you know, being right. not economically viable for whatever reason. We're right. we're a completely new team of people proposing a completely new project. On the same parcel, Alice. Just so you know, uh, I have been in that main building recently because Lions uh, were granted the basement for storage. Okay, mm -hmm. it is it is in extremely poor condition, structurally collapsing. As I think, uh, you know, from from my untrained eye, but you could see things that are propped up that you don't know how it's still standing. So. Unfortunately, that building has gotten into uh, a, a very, very uh, high state of disrepair. Um, you know, I'd like to send our building inspector out there 
um, just because my feeling is if we start off with saying demolish the building, that's going to be a problem for us. Because part of the, I think part of, I think part of the story is in the book that I wrote. It, it talks about the church that was there. Um, where I think the last plan did not require the entire building to be saved, just a portion of the building. It, it, that that's correct. I think that the prior the prior approval um, called for for the the front of the building to be to be preserved, but. Remember, this this the, the project itself is not in, going to involve that that building. The question mm -hmm. is really more of, look, the toll is trying to find creative uh, uh, ways to incorporate it into the project. It may it may not work, and it may just be standing on on its own, not part of the the um the, the, the this project at all. But just getting your 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 feedback on on um you know any, any potential uses for for that building. But yeah, we're we're more we're happy to explore. Um, maintaining that front third of the building as was originally proposed. We're, right. We just wanted to ask and, and, and see what everyone thought, but it sounds as though the group thinks that that's worth continuing to explore. So we will, although we don't, we're not going to incorporate it as part of our project as a, as a clubhouse or whatnot, we're happy to look into, you know, saving it as a separate entity next to the yeah, project. I, you know, um, I think we, we should, um, the members, the members of the board, we should talk about that, but I don't know. I it, it is a part of Yorktown history, and um, I think um, there was a there was an agreement reached for that last um, that last subdivision, which was we'll keep a portion of it so that you don't lose all of your history in this community. Understood, and and we're we're fine with that. Understood. That's not going to change, right? That that wouldn't change with with this with this project. Okay. Well, how many total units are, uh, you know, proposed here or here? 136. 136. Yeah. 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 So there's a lot, lot more than, uh, you know, initially over there before, right? Well, uh, initially over there, you mean the, the, the former independent uh, living proposal. That, that was 108, but that was also on, on clustered small, on a smaller portion of the, of the property. Um, but also remember that that was in in connection with a also a 96 bed um, uh, skilled nursing home. So so the total density was a lot more than just that 108. Right. Right. And then I do have um, a few sample. Um... Jack, before you, before you go there, can we just talk about Old Crown Pond Road real quick? Sure. Uh, because I think that one of the things that we're going to have to understand is potential potential impact on Old Crompon Road. I know that that culvert itself, uh, which is further up towards uh, Boundbrook Lane, uh, is is something that I know our engineering department and our highway department and our highway superintendent uh, have been uh, taking a hard look at. Uh, I think we recognize that there's some uh, there's a need there for us to take a look at at replacing that culvert in the not too distant future. So I think one of the things that we should see also is any potential impact uh, that this is going to have on that old Prompon Road corridor. Well, well, and, and I guess looking at, you you really will have to look at the Hunnenbrook pump station um, because it does, uh, it, it may present some problems. Without a doubt. What was the total number of homes again? 136. 136, okay. You know, the, 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 the traffic and uh, I don't know about the water and all that, but there's so many other things were previously discussed with the less number of people. I got I to gotta find out that all the paperwork, you know, what was done before and then maybe, maybe move forward. Jack, let me ask you this. Jack, let me get, yeah, this is last. Jack, let me ask you this. Um, one of the things that we, we were hearing uh, and other proposals, would there be any consideration? I know that you're looking at an active adult community, but there's still active adults that are commuting to the city. Would you consider a shuttle service over to the train station because you're not too far? Um, we would certainly be open to exploring it. If it was something, you know, it'd have to be able to, to stand on its own because after we build the community, we're gone and the homeowners association would need right. to, to, but we're certainly 
open to looking into that. I think that would be a great selling feature if it was economically viable. Sure. Yep. Okay. okay. So I think that's something maybe also to put on your list of things to explore as well as as well as saving that third of the field home. Okay. Well, we knew field home, um, the association was looking to sell it. And I yeah. think um, this is very similar to the proposal that was on the table. I am, I am actually Vishnu, it does not turn, it may sound like more units, but you had a 108 plus 96 bed 96. hospital. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's not, it works out to be less. And no, it's on 50 the, acres. The number of unit, uh, you know, uh, the, the, uh, each individual was pretty bigger than, I don't know how, what is the dimension, everything else here, we don't know, you know? Well, okay. well, it's a townhouse. Right, it's a, it's a different product, That that's for sure. Right. 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 Yeah. So that was Just one keep... massive building. These are going to be um, units in two right. to uh, four unit buildings. Um, this will be the typical architecture. Um, these are, you know, similar units to what we build throughout uh, the county. Um, generally, and like I said, two, three, four unit buildings. They would all be first floor master bedrooms but would have some additional space on the second floor, generally for home offices or guest rooms. Um, I do have some sample floor plans here. Again, these are just representative, but they would, would be, you know, they'd be designed for downsizers, but they're, they're real homes. Um, you'd have a, a master bedroom suite, you'd have um, entertaining space, a two car garage, and then upstairs would be the, um, like I said, the, the a loft or a, a home office or a, a guest room. Mm -hmm. Potentially for you know maybe some, some nice. college age kids might come home, but there wouldn't be any school age kids here. So the, the, these are the individually owned or rental. How many percentage will be rental? These would be all for sale. Okay. So no rentals, all for sale. Right. This would be the townhome development with with an HOA. Uh, okay. Manager. Okay. So. Great. Uh, can I, can I, I think they look great. You know, I think there are already existing, you know, on the Catherine Street, you know, and uh, what will be the competition between this one and this is already there, you know? You mean Glassberry Court? Yeah, uh, Glassberry, you know, I mean, it's the whole thing. That's yeah. separate and apart. Um, they're yeah, not I mean, that's, that was built by a, a, a different developer who, who we know, but no relation to us. Um, no, 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 I'm not you know, talking they're about very the nice. Way. We like what we build. Of course. Luxury, you know, and all that. You know, I mean, it's it's a nice thing. You have the money, you can buy anything you want. You know, whatever. It, 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 Councilman Patel, typically we are a value add to the communities that we build in, mm -hmm. um, and we are good neighbors. And we do, you know, more times than not, we raise the value of this, the real estate that surrounds our our communities. I think if there was going to be a development over there, this is the kind of development that should be there. But also, it also matches with the with the Glassberry yep. Yep. development yep. across the street, which is equally yep. as beautiful. So I, I it's great. Yep. Yeah. yeah, great. I think that there's you know just a couple of things that we just need to hash out with that we identified tonight with with the pump station, uh, with the soccer field. With the uh, with the old Crompon Road corridor and and the field home that one third, so we can definitely continue to work towards that. Any yeah, other Supervisor comments? Slater, quick, quick question regarding the field home itself. I guess ideally, in a perfect world, what would be the town's ideal use for the field home going forward? Well, I think we're you know we're pretty open minded to it. Um, you know, I, obviously recognizing that uh, it doesn't. What we were hearing, I think, tonight is that it doesn't fit for as a clubhouse for for your model. Um, but I think toward to Councilwoman Roker's point, uh, clearly has historical value to our community. So that's something that we want to make sure that we can preserve in some fashion, um, but come up with some creative use. Um, and, but can I throw? Can I throw something out, Matt? Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps. Perhaps we could utilize it for. Uh, you know, not for profit groups that need meeting spots. Uh, that's maybe a great some, idea. Maybe some idea. cultural things there because the building, I think, lends to that as well. If if so. for only possibly putting one of our uh, groups that deals with history over there, 
letting them no. have an office. We, we can do that. Uh, what, Council and Roper, what about our idea of an incubator center? Oh, you know I'm going to perk up with that, right? Well, I mean, you know, what, what about what about re, you know repurposing? I, I, you know, I think his... that any place we can find um, to help help us create this incubator center is going to be wonderful, and that might be the spot. Right. What, what well, Toll Brothers? What do you guys think about you know possibly turning that into you know reusing it and repurposing it into an incubator center for? for some small businesses to get their feet underneath them. We're open to discussing um, any possibility. I, I I have to say that I need to make sure Field Home doesn't want to stay there. Of um, course. Since it's their building. But assuming they don't, we're open to, I, I think the back two thirds needs to come down. I've been in the building myself with an engineer. It's, it, it's, it's in rough shape. The front third is in the best shape. It's the, it's the facade that faces the street mm -hmm. and has the presence. Um, you know, we would need to study things like accessibility, um, long-term maintenance costs, to make sure that, you know, whoever gets this thing isn't saddled with something that... Of course. Okay. We okay. have to do our due diligence on it. I totally agree with you. That's fair. I think if, if, you're, if you're asking for the board's feedback on what potential uses are, I think we just gave you yep. a couple of really good ones, whether that's, you know, office space for some of our, uh, you know, historical uh, groups or, or not-for-profit meeting space. Or, or a, a space for, for small businesses to get their feet underneath them. I think either of those would be great uses, and I think I think it would be I think welcomed by the by the community and uh, as a whole. Well, that's depending upon the field on whether or not they're planning. Of to course, move I'm not looking to kick Mr. Mr. Hearn out of his office. So <laughs> if, the, yeah, if the field home wants to continue to use it, we we of course welcome them to remain in the town of Yorktown. <laughs> So um, look, from, from a procedural perspective, one, one of the first steps we, we would do is obviously petition your board for, for rezoning. So I would just want to, you know, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask. Uh, I know, no, you can't commit, you can't, you can't, you know, you see nothing in front of you. So it, it's obviously very preliminary in the process, but I want to make sure that uh, toll isn't, isn't, isn't uh, if we put a petition before you, isn't sort of doing something that you guys don't want to want to entertain. I'm not getting that sense tonight. I'm getting, I'm getting a sense that look, that, that this could be a really good project for everybody in, involved, but I just want to make sure that, that there, you know, aren't any objectors here that say, look, you know, just not uh, interested. You know, can, can I ask you, is there will be any solar, you know, energy be used, you know, in your new development? Because, you know, everything is now solar and, you know, we want to be, make sure that is the right place to have it because you don't have, you don't have to get rid of too many trees, you know. And if you can import, you know, bring it in that energy source, you know, would be really nice, really nice. It's yeah, something we're we're more than happy to look into. Um, sure, yeah, yeah. I think that, the that's a great point. How many, how many uh, you know, stories, you know? I'm sorry, say again. All the building will be there, you know. Yeah, there will be a lot of roof there. So, yes, yeah, the, the, buildings are, the buildings are um, they're, they're two story homes, okay. you know, by definition, but they kind of, you know, give a, more of a, an appearance of a story and a half, depending upon which side of the home you're looking at. Mm -hmm. um, and we do, um, you know, we, we do have a corporate relationships with, with national solar providers um, that we are as a as a company, uh, becoming more interested in um, in other markets, um, but you know that's typically a function of what sort of um, you know federal tax credits are available, state tax credits are right. available. Sure. Sure. You know, and it's got to make economic sense for the for the end user. Um, yep. You know, through through the through lease program. So, but absolutely something that we're interested in exploring. The the other thing that we've heard also is um, just uh, on on EV uh, capabilities, uh, having EV charger capabilities for those who yeah, that's a big selling. So a lot of our customers um, are looking for you know well that's typically so, uh, something that a, a buyer will will choose to customize you know and upgrade okay. in their home. Yeah, um, right. But it's something that has become very popular, especially now that um, you know look, EV vehicles or you know, electric vehicles are becoming so so prevalent that. Even if someone doesn't have one, they want to kind of make sure that they, you know, have the option, have the option yeah. for it down the road. Right? Absolutely. 
Yeah. Yep. As the supervisor had said earlier, um, the the road as it stands is definitely lacking in size and capabilities to handle that amount of traffic probably at this point. So in your in your um, presentation, I didn't hear anything about any type of road uh, infrastructure replacement, rehabilitation, et cetera. Yeah, that would be certainly be part of, you know, the impacts that we'll have to study and, and we'll have to prove out that the level of service um, that, you know, is on that road isn't going to be negatively impacted by our development. You know, what is, what is I would say nice or, you know, unique about, uh, you know, 55 plus communities is that they, they use roadways differently and, you know, they're not getting kids out to school in the morning and then they're not hitting you know intersections at, at what are traditionally peak hours so uh their impact to surrounding you know roadways is you know, less historically much less yeah yeah and this is 55 and above is that what this Correct. would be yes mm -hmm. yep. okay yep. thank you <laughs> question you can go yes there. mr Tagner. there will be additional services from the town you know the ambulance and uh, Police department, you know, and other other agency provide the service to the uh, to the residents of the town, you know. So all these things has to be come in in from the very beginning. There will be impact on the town, you know. To but, but, but referrals, there are referrals, Vishnu, to to those agencies, and those agencies will tell us what they would need if they need something um, separate and apart. Okay. Uh, Mr. Tagater, you got a question? Yes. Uh, my recollection was that this was first uh, offered as an R3 zone, which is a standard multifamily okay. zone, or did I misread that in the last meeting that I was in with you guys? No, it, the the portion of, portion of it, the property is in the RSP3 now, but I think we were always envisioning R, R3, R3. R, I'm sorry. These, no, no, we've always been envisioning an RSP1. You have? Yeah. Okay. So I miss, that's my mistake then. So oh, sorry. Okay. my question, because I understood it to be uh, offered as an R3, which is not age restricted. Right. Right. So my question is why do you need to switch one age restricted to our other age restricted zone uh, when for instance Glassbury Court was built under the R3 that was our independent living units similar to the product here uh, is it about density or or other amenities Just give me a little background on that well we can we can certainly take a take a look at whether the, the R3 would would meet the the density um, requirements, when I say requirements, I mean, from, from a marketing perspective, to make sure that, that this type of product would work. Um, and, and, you know, James, Casey, Jack, correct me if, I, if I'm wrong, but I, I think the RSP1 really does yield the type of, of high quality development at this site that, that that's necessary to, to bring it to the market. But, okay, well, um, I, if, I, if not, we could take a look. Um, but, yeah, I think that I think that's a, a, a pertinent question uh, in terms of going through an entire rezone from one age restricted zone to the other when we have, you know, a history here on the property uh, and the R3 in particular that typically uh, similar units can be built, independent lim living can be built in the R3. And, you know, the, hist the zoning history here also anticipated that. So I think that's an important question to answer out of the gate to, to so the board has a full and deep understanding of why you need RSP1 as opposed to RSP, RSP3. John, can you think of the differences between R3 and RSP1? RSP1, I can tell you, was written for Jefferson Village okay. and it anticipated. <laughs> That's good music. All right. Was... <laughs> How the heck it, that it, came on? It anticipated uh, other other uses, Alice, such as you know offices and so on and so forth. It's really outlined for a much bigger um, development kind of, and they named it a village, and it would operate as a village, 
And some of the doctor's offices over near Jefferson Village were, were built out uh, with that in mind. So you can do other things in the RSP1 uh, that the other RSP zones do not have. And the reason is because it was conceived as a very large community that needed and could support other uh, uses that aren't associated with residential living, essentially. That's the difference. There may be some uh, density differences that um, RSP1 affords that RSP3 doesn't. I do not know that if that's the case. I haven't dug into that myself quite yet. D uh, density and, and FAR, oh, sorry, Jonathan. Too. Yeah, uh, go ahead. FAR2 may, may also be, be the issue. I think, I think there's, there's that, some... that could be. So the history is that the RSP3 density and FAR was tweaked to um, accommodate the last approval on this property, um, just as a point of information. As another point of information, to be clear, I believe that the 96 nursing home or 96 bed nursing home exists, and therefore you, this is higher density, not lower density, in fact, just as a point of information. Uh, and my last comment is, um, as I'm sure everyone is aware, uh, that it's going as a, as a rezone. If it continues to be a rezone, we'll have to go through, you know, the full environmental review. Okay. That everybody's talking a little in advance of some things about road work and things like that. But right, uh, of course, all of that histor historical stuff, traffic will have to be brought forth in a good, solid, and uh, we got it. Deep as need be. Review. We got it. It's a reason. If it's a reason, we got right. it. So can I ask something else here? Is this going to be part of the overlay zone in a few? No, 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 no. It's not no. part of the zone. Right. Okay. Yeah. Just want to let people ask the question like this all the time. Right. Right. John, if I could just jump in on the on the previous approval, it was <clears throat> 96 nursing beds, but it was up to a up to approximately 140 to 140, 142 independent units. So initially it was initially it was uh, 102 with a 30 to 40 unit expansion for the independent units. Good. Thank you. Yeah. But you know the financial uh, financing, uh, uh, you know the I'm not say using the bad word, but it was a, you know requirement was different, you know. You know, you know, not because you know you just put certain kind of money and it just stays there until you die and all this kind of thing. You know, so this is just outright you buy or whatever. You know, look like this because it's still not very clear how it will be sold and like that. You know, or, you know, or well, it's sold like it's sold, it's, yeah, huh? it's sold like any other any other townhouse would would be sold. Yeah, it's yeah, a, yeah. That's what I mean. You know, be simple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the previous was very different, okay? I was very, very familiar with that one, okay? Oh, but that was because it was owned by the field town, which is a non-profit organization. Right. Well, David, we appreciate the presentation. Yep. We think, obviously, you, uh, you know, we, we would welcome uh, to hear more about what your vision is for, for the project and, and, and what next steps that uh, your client, you and Toll Brothers, want to take. Obviously, Toll Brothers has a... Uh, a very, very good reputation. So I think the town should be yeah. very proud that, that yeah. Toll Brothers is looking to do something in the town of Yorktown. But obviously, we're gonna we're gonna take the the you know the correct steps in the process and make sure that everything is done in accordance with all the all the requirements. Uh, and so you know, if we look forward to hopefully hearing from from you on those next steps. I read Great. about a project Toll Brothers, I believe, is doing in Tarrytown. Yeah, Sleepy Hollow. Yeah. yeah, and I got really jealous. <laughs> she was sending me, actually, Councilman Roker was sending me photos and articles about your, your development down there. Down there. So uh, she, was, she was definitely jealous. If you're ever interested in a tour, just, uh, just let us know. We're no, 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 no. She's staying in Yorktown. She stays in New York. Hey, hopefully. <laughs> now I'm a free agent no, no, no. after this. After this <laughs> Very good. Good. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you guys for having us. Very much. We'll be with appreciate, you appreciate the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Have a good night. You too. Okay. Next, we're going to welcome a team from Homeland Towers. 
we're also going to have our town attorney then participate a bit more in this conversation. Um, this is in regards to a potential proposal for the cell phone tower on Granite Springs Road on the east side of the town of Yorktown. Uh, and so happy to welcome Robert and, and Klaus uh, and Manny to the town board here. Uh, Robert, you want to kick us off? Yes, good evening. Thank you, Supervisor and members of the board and also Mr. Rodriguez and, and, town, and the town clerk. Um, thank you for having us tonight. Uh, as you know, Homeland Towers has been um, working with the town for a number of years. Uh, they partnered with the town on another town-owned property. Um, which also accommodated uh, municipal service antennas, which was a great win-win for the town. We've been trying to locate um, other locations within the town, primarily um, to solve coverage gaps, but also to comply with the town code. Uh, I know the town planner, John, is here as well. Uh, the town code specifically says that wireless facilities shall be located on town-owned lands. So Homeland Towers has you know, undertaken a review of the town-owned properties, um, I'd like to, if, if you would, Mr. Supervisor, allow Mr. Vicente to spend a couple minutes. He has a few slides just to introduce yep, uh, the proposal, which I think might help uh, visualize what Homeland Towers is proposing. Uh, as, as you may or may not know, Mr. Vicente is the president of Homeland Towers. Uh, his, his regional director is uh, Klaus Wimmer, also from Homeland Towers. He's with us as well. But uh, with that, I'd like to kick it over to Manny and, and let him make the, the initial presentation. Excellent. Thank you, uh, Supervisor, members of the board. It's good to see you. Wish was there in person. Uh, it's been a long time. Um, but uh, as Rob said, we've been working uh, with uh, the supervisor and staff uh, for a number of years to address the remaining issues, coverage issues, and, and other quality issues of service in, in the town of Yorktown. Um, our company, just to give you a little background, we work with municipalities, communities and the wireless industry to address some of the remaining coverage issues out there, both holes, quality and capacity issues. And unfortunately, we still have some real coverage issues in, in places like Yorktown. So we've been at, at, uh, at it for a while looking at um, what the needs of Yorktown are and how to best address them from a coverage perspective, from a siting perspective. Um, so with that, if Klaus, you can go to the next slide. So one of the things that's very important is when we look at a coverage needs, and I think you have some experience in, in, in this as well, we want to make sure that there's a real problem, that there's a real coverage problem, that it's not you know, a, a snapshot in time, that it's a persistent problem, and that pretty much everyone has it. So in particular, in the eastern part of, of Yorktown, south of Route 6, all the way down to Yorktown Heights, um, there's some serious quality issues and coverage issues that all four carriers have, all four licensed carriers. And those are Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, and DISH. And it's very important to understand that this isn't a problem for one carrier, one provider. This is a problem for the industry as a whole and the residents. Uh, of the area. Um, so our main job is to um, work to find the best location. Um, and we feel very strongly that municipalities uh, should be very involved, that we that they should leverage every benefit they can from the development of this infrastructure. So we took a hard look at the area. It's a highly residential area, as you know. Uh, it's a beautiful area. And we took a, a look at all the municipal properties that the town had. We took a, a look at any other viable options. Uh, are there any existing facilities, existing structures that can be utilized, et cetera? And unfortunately, there are not. There are no tall structures, no existing sites. So the remedy uh, is to develop a new wireless infrastructure tower here. Um, and to provide you know, the maximum coverage, maximum benefit. So after looking at and working uh, with the town and, and its staff, looking at various uh, town properties and the area as a whole in the past few years, we're pretty certain that this location that uh, we're presenting this evening and that has been in discussion is the best location to provide 
uh, coverage to the area. Um, just a, a reminder that um, the project is, is basically a tower. It's an unmanned facility. We have an access drive. Um, there, there is uh, regular maintenance, one vehicle per month generally, and it would be a small vehicle like an SUV or a van. Um, and most of the activity is during construction, which most, most of the construction, construction we last about three months. And then we also have to wait for utilities. So sometimes that can take a few additional months. So generally from three to six months um, to, to build the site and get all the utilities and activate a site. But as far as the project as a whole, it's an unmanned facility. It's a fairly small footprint with an access drive. Um, and the main activity is during construction. Uh, so if you can go to the next slide. Um, so this is just a Google image of the area. And the site is, is essentially adjacent to Stewart Farm, just north of Granite Springs Road. Um, it's very difficult in this area to find uh, number one, willing landlords uh, for, for this type of facility. And number two, to stay as far as away from a residential properties mm -hmm. as possible. It's always sure. a challenge because the area um, for the most part is residential and that is what needs the coverage. So it's very, so you have to be in the residential area to cover the residences. It's as simple as it gets. And we think that this property um, is located so that it, it, it's further away from the most of, amount of residences uh, and still does the job very, very well. And we'll get into that. So this just gives you a little, uh, your bearings on where that would be. Uh, Klaus, I think you skipped, uh, we can go right to here. Here's a little more detail on the actual design that we're proposing. You can see that there's an access from Granite Springs Road and that it, uh, it, we're trying to put the site far into the property, further, furthest away from folks as possible. There's a lot of mature trees and growth here, so that's going to give a lot of good screening um, to the nearest residents and, and to those even further away. Um, many times, you know, when we're going to get into um, our full due diligence package uh, to the board when we're ready um, and should the board uh, want to move forward, but many times the closer you are to a facility, if there's good screening, the less you see. It's all uh, about perspective and location, so we'll do a thorough visual analysis for the board so they get a good understanding uh, of, of what we're looking at here. So this is essentially the basic site plan. Mr. Vicente, um, can I just ask a quick question while you're here? Sure. The, uh, the homeowner next to the, your proposed driveway. Yes. Uh, what are we able to do to minimize the impact on, on his home? Well, it's a really good question, and um, we, that's where we can work with uh, your staff to see what we can do landscaping-wise, mm -hmm. uh, to see whether it's on the town property or um, landscaping that the, the, the neighbor can control. Mm -hmm. We've done that very often. You know, off-site landscaping sometimes is a much better approach than on-site landscaping. Okay. So we're very open to making sure that we do the best we can um, to, to mitigate any, any views, any impacts to these neighbors. Um, there's only so much we can do, but we're more than willing to do that. And I think that's where um, your staff is going to be really helpful and your input. Um, but yeah, I, I, I definitely think that's part of what we, we need to be doing here. Yeah, I just want to be cognizant of, uh, of, of all the homeowners there, but especially this individual. He's already stopped by my office. Uh, I know that he's, uh, he's watching tonight. Uh, and I think that we have to be especially sensitive to the fact that we're essentially installing a driveway next to his house. So we just need to make sure that we're working collaboratively with that, with that homeowner to minimize that impact. It, absolutely, and that's one of the reasons why we often do offsite landscaping, because mm -hmm. uh, the neighbors know what what bothers them the most. And you know, I think I think 
that that we're more than prepared and willing to do that. Uh, we're we're not at a stage until we do a full uh, visual resource analysis. It's hard to to understand what the visibility yeah. is and and what the best uh, approach would be to mitigate any visibility. Right, right. but it, but, it, but I think for for that house, not only is it the visibility, but also installing the driveway now next to it. I think it's the combination of the two that that make it particularly sensitive. So we just need to make sure that we're communicating and, and, and working with that homeowner uh, just so they understand the, the, the you know, potential impact and, and what mitigation can be provided. Yeah, and, and maybe some of that mitigation could be fencing. Yep. Maybe some of that mitigation is landscaping. Maybe it's both. Yep. Um, but yeah, I, I understand that yep. we're, we're close to a residence here. Right. And as much as we try to stay as far away from residences as possible, um, we are in a residential area, and at some point, we're going to get close to somebody. No, and I and I acknowledge that. And I'm just yeah. I just want to make sure that as 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 town officials that we're speaking for uh, the residents who have come before us. And, and again, this individual has already uh, paid me a visit my office um, just to make sure that we were taking every precaution that we can, mm -hmm. just to minimize minimize the direct impact. And and we're we're sensitive to that. Yep. And we're used to we have a lot of experience at coming up with solutions, but yep. everyone's input is, is very important in doing that. No, I'm confident that we can come up with, with several proposals and solutions and to work with that individual. I just wanted to put it on your radar. Absolutely. Um, just one question I have, if, if I may. Um, I understand during the construction of this particular tower, there's going to be people transversing on this road back and forth quite often. What would the frequency of people being on this particular driveway going in and out on a um, finished basis? Once it's, it's really done. Good, it's a really good question. Um, number one, we have to be sensitive to the times of day and, and week that we can work. Weekends, for example, um, many on many projects, you know, there are no construction during weekends. Mm -hmm. Work hours are important as well. And then to answer your question as far as the construction activity. So there's three main phases of construction here. First is the clearing and grading phase. Then there's the, um, the actual build phase. Um, where we, where we do the foundation and pour the foundation. And then the final phase is the, the tower erection phase. Those are, those are the um, activities that um, have the heaviest vehicles and the, and the most you know, noise, et cetera. The good news is the tower erection happens in one day. The tower, uh, um, foundation, the whole is done in the course of probably three to four days. Then we have rebar and then we have the pour. So in about a week to two weeks, the foundation is done. So in this particular case, the, the main disturbance is going to be the clearing and grading mm -hmm. because that's, and, and that will probably last a good week here. Um, so we anticipate that there's going to be about three weeks in increments, not all consecutively, where there's some significant activity uh, with, with you know, some, some you know, larger members of crew and, and larger equipment on, on the property. Mm -hmm. So it isn't, it isn't three months every day of this heavy activity and heavy machinery. It's those three main um, phases. Right, and then once it's up, it's minimal just to make adjustments and to check things once in a while, I guess. Yeah, on average, it's a it's a once a month visit by an SUV because once the site is built, it's it's basically a maintenance issue. They go and check the site. And it's important to understand these sites are remotely monitored twenty four seven, mm -hmm. so no one goes out to the site unless there's a problem. And then the regular maintenance is actually been cut down a lot these days. Um, but yeah, you're talking about once a month. On average, right. Oh, and oh, with uh, will there be a um, a generator on site, and will there be uh, electrical 
wires having to be put either underground or above ground to it? So the, the utilities, we propose to be underground for a lot of different reasons. And okay. the main reason is we don't want trees falling on our lines. Right. And knocking out uh, power to the site or, or telco to the site or fiber. Um, so it'll be underground. As far as generators go, we all want to make sure that the carriers, and this is a carrier decision. It's not really our decision, uh, but a carrier decision to, play, to have backup power. Some of them use batteries. Some of them use generators. Some of them use both. Um, I think that's something that's important. Um, the type of generators, because we're near wetlands, they're going to be probably propane generators. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we're, that's what we're probably looking at here. I can't give you a definitive answer because, like okay. I said, the carriers make their backup power uh, protocols mm -hmm. and arrangements. But generally, you do have a generator and it is in a, in a site like this, it would be propane field. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Vicente, I just, if we could, and I don't know if, if you'd be able to answer this, maybe Klaus can jump in or, or uh, Adam, but across the street on the other side of Granite Springs Road is a, is a sewer pump station. Yeah. Uh, I, I, my, my recollection is that we did look at that site, but it did not prove to be conducive to uh, providing additional coverage. Can you refresh my memory on that? Sure, and, and Klaus, you can jump in and correct me if I get this wrong, but we did, I was at the property, and Klaus was at the property a few times. Mm -hmm. The property is is very limited in space, right? and there's a lot of, of plumbing, you know, pipes, and, and, and other um, uh, equipment there as well. So we, we looked at it pretty hard. We just couldn't uh, find a way to find enough space uh, to put it that location okay so that that's the main reason and and we also looked at other municipal properties in the area and all of them had uh, significant challenges this this was the one that had the least amount of challenges quite frankly well i just wanted to make sure that that the residents understood that we have looked at other uh, areas in the vicinity and i know that some may ask well why not go just across the street to the to the pump station that's already there i just wanted to, you be able to explain that so that they understood the thought process behind why here and not there right so and and i think when when we put together a more thorough comprehensive package for the town board we're going to lay that out in, in in detail was the was the topo an issue over there as well is that I, I, for some reason i thought that was an issue we talked about too with it, it is it, it is it's it's um it's challenging both in space and, you know, it, it also uh, has, um, uh, I think, a, 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 a dip in elevation that's significant on two sides. Right. And then the lower elevation is, is the lake, you know, slash wetland there. Right. So it, it really, it, it, if we thought we could do it, we would. Um, we just can't fit it, fit a site there. Right. Again, I, I appreciate that, and I just wanted the board and the public to understand one more time that we did vet mm -hmm. several sites, uh, especially in this area, to try to make that work. And I, and I think, you know, we're going to be packaging that together in, in detail, but we have been looking at this for uh, about two years plus now. So it's not something that, um, you know, we, we, we rush to, um, mm -hmm. that's for sure. No, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Now, the next slide. Uh... Uh, let me say something, guys, okay? You look like you know everything. I want to know exact location because I don't know, okay? Can you please kindly put me in a street or somebody guide me how far it is, okay? Is this far away from uh, Sparkle, you know, the lake or something? Because I, I, you know, I'm still having, and it is a part. Of, how far from the Somers border? That's another thing. So it's it's right on the right Somers border, border Councilman Patel. If you look right here on that pin, yeah, already, yeah. Stewart's, Stewart's, Stewart's farm is on your right. Right. Granite Springs Road is right here. You're coming up from the lake. If you see no, here, no, my, may may I say something? I know exactly. So is this part of the Somers and uh, Yorktown border? Yes. Or we right. own the land. And we are saying that this is part of the Yorktown. This is town land. 
This is town land on the border of Yorktown and Somers. Okay, yeah, that's what I mean. Okay, so do the the, the Somers would have something to say in this one? And yeah. let me just ask some of the technical question now. You know, what will be the height of the antenna? What will be the you know the uh, there's some noise, electronic noise, radiations. You know, there are so many other things to be discussed. So are you uh, not asking us to comment on this thing now that this is just the first time proposal? And then what will uh, will be the revenue? And if you have a more than a one, uh, you know, the the customer, there'll be a different antenna. And then you know there are the there are other electronic gizmo for translating the signal. You know, and, and all, all these things are will be discussed later on because if there is electronic interference between the this is very high frequency. What will be the frequency here? You know, I want to know about that one. Sure. So if, if I can try and answer some of those questions, um, Mr. Supervisor. Yeah, please. Um, correct, Councilman. This is just an initial presentation. What we will do is put together a package that will include the site plan, the visuals, the radio frequency exposure report, which you, you've asked for in the past, and we'll put that together with, with all the potential carriers. We'll do a noise analysis based on some of the questions related to the generator. Uh, we'll have an environmental assessment form, uh, and we'll put that whole package together with the proposed lease agreement, which uh, is consistent with um, the terms that we've done with the town and other sites. And at that point, and only at that point, then the town board would start the process. And one of the ways to start the process would be the environmental review process. And it would be a very simple first step where the board um, referred the application out to your planner, your planning board, your wetlands, town engineer, uh, DEC, possibly DEP. Uh, the town of Somers has no, um, has no approval authority over this, but you may yeah. or may not want to refer it to them. You could, it's not necessary. Um, and then that would start the process. And then ultimately there would be a public hearing so everyone could give their input. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is merely just a very preliminary um, overview of what's proposed, but all of those details uh, will ultimately be put in an application package to you. And then, then uh, uh, you are going to lease the land or you're going to buy it? No, so Homeland Towers would lease the property and there would be a minimal, uh, a minimum, I should say, a minimum monthly rental that would be paid to the town. And then plus on top of that, the town would get a percentage of the revenue generated from each of the carriers that go on the tower. So those are all really good questions. And Klaus, if you can go to the second um, site map there, uh, the second exhibit. So when we build a facility, we have to build a facility. We know that four carriers have a need here. So we have to build a facility that handles um, the needs of all the carriers to cut down tower proliferation in the area. That's a very important point that the councilman brings up. And each, carry, each carrier coming onto the project would have to go through a, a, a review with the town um, to get on the tower. Um, now, we also provide space for public safety, which is very important as well, because as public safety um, systems go more and more digital, um, they're going to pretty much need every facility out there to co-locate on. So that's really important as well here. And that space is, is free of cost to, to the public safety entities in town. So those are very good questions and very good points. And as Rob uh, said, you know, we are trying to get you up to speed with where we are and present this project. Um, a, lot of, uh, a lot more details are coming your way as Rob mentioned. If you can go to the coverage plot uh, that we have, Klaus, so this is what it's all about. Why are we doing this? Um, this is a, just to cover, just to uh, give you a, an idea of what the proposed coverage is from this facility. Um, it doesn't have existing coverage. When we do our full RF reports, we're gonna show you the existing coverage. We're gonna overlay the coverage from this side into that existing coverage so you guys see what the current coverage is and what this what improvement this brings to the coverage. Um, so all that is coming your way as we get closer. But I wanted to give you just a, a general understanding of how much coverage this site is going to provide and improve uh, to uh, the, the town of Yorktown. 
Um, you can see that it goes, it, you know, it's a huge residential area that we're co that we're covering and improving, trying to improve the, mm -hmm. the, the the coverage and the quality of signal. It goes almost all the way up to Route Six. The coverage it goes all the way down into um, Yorktown Heights. When you see those holes, those little holes that aren't green, that's because there's a terrain depression there, and the the, the terrain drops down. Doesn't mean that there isn't going to be any coverage. And when we do our full um, reports, we're going to demonstrate that. Um, but this gives you a, just a little bit of understanding of, of, of why this site is a good site and, and you know, what it's going to cover. Um, it's almost like a little bit of a tease, quite frankly, because until we overlay it over existing coverage and determine uh, that this is, is the minimum height. And to answer uh, the councilman's question, the, the proposed height right now is 130 feet. Um, we're gonna make sure that that's the height that's necessary. If we, can, if we all feel in doing the technical analysis that we can lower the height and still achieve that coverage, we will. But I just, we just wanted to not just show you a map and, and we wanted to show you why we're doing it and what we think the coverage is gonna be. And, and this is just a little piece of the RF data that we're gonna be supplying to the board once it's done. And then what is another uh, repeater antenna, you know, uh, your tower within this area? Do you, you cover in the next side, you know? I mean, north, east, west side, how many miles or kilometers, you know, you are covering. So you, you need another one too, right? I mean, just not only the one. So, so yeah, yes. for this area, like I said, it, it's this is substantial coverage from one site. And yeah. when we overlay this over the existing coverage, that's when you're going to get the answer to your question. Um, the, the important sometimes it's not so much how much a, co a site covers, is it, is it, does it cover what it needs to cover? Mm -hmm. um, is, it, is it covering the right area? And that's why we, we need the overlay. We need to put this over the existing coverage so that you get a full picture there. It's also a way for us to determine whether we need this height or whether we can live with something lower. Um, because of the neighbors and, and other aspects here, we, we don't wanna build something taller than it needs to be. So this RF analysis that we're putting together that um, will be in front of the board along with a lot of other details when we're ready um, is, is gonna fill in all those questions for you. And uh, finally, if we can go to slide, I think four, Klaus. You know, one of the things that you know, Homeland Towers were started primarily to get municipalities involved in solving coverage problems. You know, I, I was with the, um, in working for the carriers directly for many years, and we had a lot of successes and some failures. And one of the things I realized is that municipalities were, were really missing a huge opportunity not being involved in the development of wireless facilities. And we started Homeland Towers primarily to teach municipalities to leverage all the benefits that they can from the development of this infrastructure. As many times the industry comes in with a project or a tower, it's met with some opposition. There, there's a lot of uh, distrust, there's a lot of fighting. And we think that, that that's sometimes unnecessary. And we think that municipalities should play a, a major role and really look to all the benefits. So what are the benefits? Well, first and most importantly, we're gonna improve service to the area. That's why we're doing it uh, primarily. That's what the industry needs. That's what the residents need. That's what the businesses need. Um, so that's the, the big benefit. Um, the next benefit of siting on municipal land is a predictable, long-term reoccurring revenue stream. If there's going to be a tower built in an area, I think that a municipality and the tax base should benefit from it as more than any private resident or pro private property owner. So that's a, that's a very important piece as well. If there's going to be a tower in the area, it might as well be on town property where the tax base can, can, can see some benefit to it. 
The other thing we want to do, and in, in, in the past, we have offered services, et cetera, to help municipalities with a very difficult issue of funding public safety equipment. We've learned a lot over the years that the town should be in control of how it does that because sometimes, you know, there's disagreements on that or, um, you know, there should be in control of what they buy, what they put up and the warranties, et cetera. So we're offering $25,000 towards uh, the purchase of public safety equipment as part of our lease agreement with the town. Um, and that's not just for this site, any other site we do. And is and that above really and beyond the, Mr. Vicente, is that above and beyond the recurring revenue stream? It is, it is. And the reason why we're doing that is because in our discussions with the police department, with the fire department, the ambulance corps, what we're realizing is that it's very, very difficult for them to get the funding that they need to buy critical equipment for them. And we think this is really an important addition to our proposal. Um, the other main benefit, uh, and as along, we were already offering free use of the tower, um, but I think this is listening to, to these folks and their struggles, I think this is gonna go a long way to help. Um, the other thing is control. So towns have control over their, their zoning code, their boards over the siting of facilities, but there's no better control that you can have than controlling the lease, then making sure not only that your, your code is, is supported, but that you have direct control contractually over that over the facility. And it's extremely important uh, benefit to the town and to the community. Um, and then I, as I stated, you know, free co-location for town emergency responders. Um, this, this is all, this is why municipalities should be involved. This is, this is why we uh, started Homeland Towers is to make sure, because it wasn't, quite frankly, it just wasn't happening 20 years ago and it wasn't happening often enough. Uh, about 60 to 70% of all our projects today are municipal projects because it makes sense for these reasons. Um, with that, I think, I, think I'm, I'm, I can answer any other additional questions, but we wanted to really just get you up to date with where we were um, and now that we, we found a definitive property that we think is the best to, to provide the, 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 uh, the coverage relief that's needed, uh, it was important to, to communicate to the board, you know, what we know, what we understand, and, um, you know, answer any questions as we prepare a more thorough, detailed package for the board to review. What was the last site you came before the board on? It was the, the it was the site up by the water tanks um, on uh, I want to say Quinlan. Yeah, Quinlan. Quinlan. Yep. Yeah. Thank yep. you. So let, let me just another question: Did the benefits to the people or community surrounding here, whatever the area we are covering, is this the high speed connections uh, and the reliability? And the cost uh, also be a question to be, you know, answered sometime in the future, you know? Yes, the, uh, the services provided now by the carriers uh, includes the wireless broadband. So it'll be cellular phone service, texting, calling, uh, messaging, wireless internet, things of that nature. And, uh, you know, the because you know the problem is the weather and uh, you know storms are like that you know is there any interference uh, for you know downtime or something goes wrong like that or it's just a normal uh, operation will go work will all the time whether you know is uh, sunny so, day or a rainy day or a snowy day no the, the the rain or snow will not affect the system as as Manny mentioned what Homeland Towers does is when they build the system, they, they put the utilities underground so there's no visual impact, there's no impact from falling trees. Um, they also you know, are building these facilities with the backup generators, so it has the backup power. Um, so they're very, very reliable in comparison to, as we all know in this area, NYSEG and uh, Cablevision, um, 
you know, things of that nature where we constantly have outages. These types of facilities really do provide that, um, that backup uh, service when, when all the other facilities are out. So this kind of, uh, you know, technology you want to bring it over here, then you can have a reliable coverage coast to coast or maybe all over the world, you know? Correct. And Councilman, that's what we're trying to do here. They're, we're trying to address those remaining problem areas in Yorktown. Uh, we addressed one already that was significant. Um, this is probably the, re, the, the, the most significant remaining hole or underserved area uh, of Yorktown right now. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Vicente, I can tell you that I've received quite a number of emails and, and, uh, contacted by quite a number of residents in the area uh, who've seen that their cell phone service has diminished. Uh, my son goes to the elementary school not too far from there. If you're going down Broad Street, I have to hang up before I hit Loader Road uh, because you lose service. People on Hedwig don't have service. So um, I think that, that we agree that this is definitely one of the areas in town uh, that have seen a significant diminished uh, service of their cell phone and mobile devices. So we, we appreciate the presentation and, and look forward to hearing back from you when you have a more yep. complete package. Just one point, uh, just quickly, it hasn't been raised, but the, the land is parkland, it's dedicated parkland. So, you know, in order to enter into the lease, we'd have to engage in the alienation process. I mean, the town, we can enter into the lease subject to alienation, which is I think, you know, what we discussed with Homeland, uh, but just wanted to flag that for the board. Okay. Thank you, Adam. Appreciate Thanks, it. Adam. Thank you for your attention. Thanks. Adam. Well, thank you very much for your time this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Appreciate it. Good night. Have a great night. Good night. Thanks, you too. All right. And the last item for discussion tonight is our solar law. I'm going to turn it over to Councilman Diana. Thank you, Supervisor. Um, I had met with uh, John Tegeter with regard to this. Uh, it's no secret that my um, feeling on ground array is not a warm and fuzzy one, so to speak. And um, I think John shares a similar view to that as I. Um, we, had, uh, we had gone over the law and um, the projects that are ongoing now. As of right now, there are approximately uh, 10 um, with... Um, two that are approved, Hemlock Hills Farm and uh, IBM Solar, if I'm not mistaken. Right, John? That's correct. Yeah. Um, we went over a number of things, mostly concentrating at this point on the um, uh, residential and commercial solar panels that will be ground mounted, the so-called ground array panels. And uh, going through the law, we had come up with a few things that had uh, hit us and we thought should be changed or, or um, strengthened in the law. Um, the, the main thing that, I, that was glaring to me was that we all said screening. Now, if you take my particular piece of property and my next door neighbor who has probably about the same acreage as I, are both on approximately the same downward slope. If I'm having coffee on my deck, there's no way I'm not going to see that particular. If you're up. Okay. Right, because I'm up, unless they put up 40-foot trees, which is impractical. Mm -hmm. um, the, um, the, yeah, the, that was, that was the, the one thing. If you just looking at it from if, if I if someone else had a similar piece of property how would they do that um, the landscape screening is as described in uh, let me see it goes on it goes on uh, landscape screening which would be uh, It just says that uh, landscape screening and buffering shall be required. A ground-mounted solar energy system shall be fully screened from adjacent properties. Uh, I'm sorry, from adjacent residential properties, streets, or roads, which it fronts or 
is visible from and any other views from which the planning board deems necessary, which is good. Um, but we had come up with another portion on that that we think might be helpful not to only the planning board and the not the only the planning board, but to also the neighbors around is a balloon test or a um, uh, mock-up structure that could be moved around easily to see from all different directions if you could see these things. Hello, Rich. I didn't see you come in there. How are you doing? Um, Rich Fine, chairman of the planning board. So that was that was one other that was one other thing that we had discussed. One of the other glaring things in here is the abandonment and decommissioning. Thank now, you. it's my understanding that these things have approximately um, a 20 to 25 year life cycle. It could be a little bit more, a little bit less, but right in there. Now, there is an abandoning procedure in here. And um, John, correct me if I'm wrong on this. Is there a there is a bond that's to be put in place for that abandoning procedure, abandoning and um, uh, yes, decommissioning. That's correct. Here's my fear. Having been in business as long as I have, I've seen companies that I've dealt with come and go, and. They'll wine you and dine you and tell you this thing is the next best thing since sliced bread. And then all of a sudden they're gone and you have no backup. So as I said, my fear to that is, is that we get a company that comes in ABC Solar and they're here for five years. Then all of a sudden they're gone. Mm -hmm. Who's responsible for that? Now we can get that land back or the person can get that land back. But who's going to be responsible for the cleanup and the taking down and or putting up new panels? By that time, maybe the panels that take up 10 acres today will only take up an acre in 20 years. I don't know. So we had come up with a couple of things here. Um, and first of all, for the shielding would have been a yearly inspection and enforcement most likely done by our uh, engineering department um, to actually go around and look to make sure there are no dead trees, that the shielding is in place and or thriving. Um, and also that future bonding would be put on this so that it would either kick in after a certain number of years where it actually escalates because you have decommissioning today cost you oh, okay. $500 decommissioning in 20 years. And we've just talked about that today on um, uh, with the price of things and, and, and yep. car garbage and so forth. Um, it exponentially went out of sight. So, what may be $500 a day to recon, I'm using, just using numbers. Um, what may cost you $500 a day mm -hmm. is going to cost you $10,000 in 20 years. Who do you want to be responsible for that, Tommy? Because that's my, always for the my, bonding, Alice. Um, well, the bonding, I can get that, but I'm talking about the actual, because what you just said makes sense. Things in greater, the yeah. price increases. Who's going to be responsible for saying, Okay, um, your bond is now five fifty rather than five hundred. Well, this is something that John and I had discussed, and we're going to have to probably get in touch with Bond Council to find out how actually all the the bonding does work. Right. Um, can we go from day one and have it increase every year by X? I don't mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. um, and and that this is something that that should be put in place for. Um, now okay. and for future respondents because okay. like i say you could have abc solar works go out of business tomorrow as soon as it's put up we don't know now we're stuck with it you know the property owner's not paying the taxes it gets it gets in rem to the town now we're stuck with it we got a hundred thousand dollar piece of property i'm once again i'm just using a number 
Uh, we have a hundred thousand dollar piece of property that we got to put five hundred thousand dollars in to get rid of what's there. Okay. Um, and um, lastly, so we can get this all worked out once and for all, and not drag it into nausea like the tree law was. Um, I'd like to put a sixty to ninety day moratorium on any new projects that are coming. Uh, before us or that may come before us so that we can have all this in place and that um, the with the understanding that the 10 that are before us now will have to um, will have to comply with the fee and bond schedule that we do come up with within that time frame would that be legal I don't know if that's legal or not Madam, uh, this is what may I just say one word here, uh, Diana, uh, Councilman Diana. This is really good, okay? Mm -hmm. But uh, we want to, you know, also put this kind of things on housing individually home. Suppose I buy in my house, I put the solar, and when you want to sell somebody else, it doesn't air, or maybe something goes wrong, and they abandon the house, then uh, you know maybe not 5 million today, we have uh, uncollected taxes, maybe 10, 15, 20, you know, so the whole will get bigger. So I think this should be combined, you know, either the commercial as well as a homeowner or some kind of, you know. Uh, it, it's commercial and home, like if you had it in your backyard, right? Yeah, commercial no, and residential. Commercial and residential, it would fall oh. into. It just okay. becomes a, uh, it would become a burden on the town with it. You know, let's say, let's just say the people abandon the houses we've seen in the past with the, uh, with the lessening of mortgage and people getting all sorts of money and all of a sudden they can't afford what they have, um, you know, and then they just abandon it and walk away. We end up with it. And now we're stuck with all this. So we definitely have to have something in place. One more thing is like, suppose you have a house, you know, and you know, whatever size you want to expand and all that. And then you guy can say, Oh, I don't like this house, build another one. And he may need, he may not, want that solar cell maybe have a different technology you know something you know coming up at that time uh, if he abandon or, or maybe just bury or something who will be responsible for you know those materials to be removed or he just left there in the ground something because well, that's why we take a bond. environmental hazardous material into the uh, into the technology you know and yep. it may be oil gas but it's some kind of metal something you know there'll be always something in that you know so this is a good start for our town to have this kind of you know thing added in a, in a laws, you know. Yeah. Before, the other um, thing, Vishnu. Oh, yeah, go yeah. ahead, Supervisor. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Vishnu, I just have a question. What is in these solar panels? In in just a, in just small, easy for people to understand stuff because I don't know. Which what can I say? In what's in, 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 in the, what's in the solar panels? Uh, okay. What is the material inside? You know, let me tell you. It is basically a silicon wafer. And, and, and it's a PN junction like that. You know, so when you shine the light, it, it moves the flow of electron and then it just, but then there are new kind of materials, you know, and they increase the efficiency of the solar cell. And you don't know today the whole periodic table, you know, and then they put it like a sandwich cover and a coating, then you it can generate even more power. So you can put the water and generate the hot water, you know, mm -hmm. through some, uh, uh, you know, like a radiators, you know, you extract the heat. So there are no many different kind of a solar cell coming in and continuously improvement on the new materials. You know, we don't know what kind of material will do it. So right. this is going to be continuously improvement. It's just like you buy a car or a house or clothing, you know, yeah. and yeah. Uh, new technology will come and uh, electronic material, uh, you know, the, the like a computer parts and, uh, uh, you know the all all the kind of other thing like a television and all that thing with the tubes and different kind of a material they have a different toxicity so we don't know what will be the next generation you know right now it's not that bad but then other component you know goes around to move, move this thing happen like a television is a different and a led type is a difference so we don't know what kind of new material some of them are maybe a jardis a small amount and they will all end up in the ground you know we don't know yet we don't right. Know. And that's that's part of the other thing. We don't know where even this stuff would be recycled at this point. And I just want to make it real clear. I'm not against solar energy by any stretch of the imagination, but I think it has its place. 
and it has its purpose. Um, you know, top of buildings, roofs, uh, I believe Ed and, and, and the supervisor have it on their houses. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, and I guess it reduces the, the electricity uh, uh, consumption and puts enough back into the grid that it basically pays for itself. Um, but that being said, John, you want to add anything to uh, any of this that we went over I may have left out? Uh, a couple of things. Um, generally speaking, uh, I just want to let everybody know that all is not lost here. I mean, the law does have a lot of things in it. The basis right. of most of our discussion was uh, strength strengthening some of these things. So yeah. in terms of bond, right. I, think, I think we all need a little, we could all bear a little education in how these long-term bonds would work and how we would go about escalating them to make sure that they keep up with the costs, which probably could be tied to the consumer price index or every five years or something, something like that. But I think we all need a little education and that the, the solar law could stand to some clarification and strengthening in that regard. I do want to point out that um, in the law, if a system is not decommissioned, the town can go in and, and remove it and then Put a lien on the on the property, so that does exist in the law. Not that you ever want to pull that trigger on that, but the other yeah. the other thing that I wanted to mention in terms of the screening, which exists in, in two sections of the law. Tom uh, read the one about small scale solar, mm -hmm. which you'll see mostly on single family residential, but there's also a, a much larger paragraph in the large scale solar ones, which does require screening. Um, but one of the things that Tom was uh, concerned with was um, enforcement and maintenance of said screening. And I pointed out that there is a, a section in the zoning code 300-199, uh, yes. which gives explicit uh, power to maintain screening that's required as part of any approval pursuant to chapter 300. So, I, And it's a very strong paragraph. I think I need to read that unless you would like me to. Does uh, that? I'm sorry? What department does that? Uh, it is, unfortunately for Dan, it's the town <laughs> the town engineer. engineer. <laughs> when he's down there by himself? <laughs> but, it, but it does say uh, any other person or persons designated by the town board. So you can, uh, at your whim, uh, designate anyone. Yeah. So that's a, help, that's a help to Dan, I think. John, I remember when we went through the initial law, uh, I think you said that, you know, we need, you know, we need to go through it a couple of times to see where, what we need to do to make changes. And I think this is fine. Um, can, we yeah. bring in, can we bring in, not to cut you off, Councilwoman, but I think we should bring in Rich. Fine. I agree. I forgot that. I yep. forgot. I'm sorry. Rich, you there? Because, uh, you know, we, 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 we legislate these uh, great ideas and then it's Rich in the planning board and some of our other boards that are implementing them. So Rich, can you just, I'm just curious from your standpoint, um, how is it going with the solar law? Do you, have you found deficiencies in the solar law? Do you, uh, you've, been, you've been hearing the conversation tonight. Do you feel that there's, that these proposals by Councilman Diana, um, are, they, are, do they, are they helpful? Can, are they, can they be incorporated in your, in your approving resolution in some way? Is there already, Talk to us. Let us know from the implementation standpoint, since you're the one reviewing these applications. If I could, I first want to start out with, first and foremost, a planning aspect. <clears throat> you know, I've been in public service for 32 years now, and you have a storm coming. New York State has put uh, the nuclear power plant out of business. Mm -hmm. uh, New York State is requiring mm -hmm. all vehicles go electric by 2030, somewhere in there. Yeah, mm -hmm. 2030. You're going to be going with the, the lawn equipment. I, it's terrible because I really love my blower, but everything's <laughs> going electric. Don't tell Do uh, Dolly, Tom. I won't. I won't. But, I mean, we're just lucky that Con Ed came in with the, the uh, proposal to put the electric plant on 202, that's going to mm -hmm. save us. Right. Because mm -hmm. Con, obviously, Con Ed isn't going to do anything to their infrastructure. No. Nothing. So you're going to have diminished uh, 
vehicles using uh, gasoline. You can have increased electric. Uh, I, I honestly think, you know, I am not a fan favorite of the, 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 the ground mounted, but I do think it's necessary. Um, and I think down the road, you know, you deal with uh, what we deal with now is water, right? You think about the two things that make the area absolutely unlivable if you don't have them. Clean water, and at this point, electricity. Right. And I would just urge all of you, as you look forward towards this, for purposes of just planning with infrastructure, this is something that's, that's coming fast and furious. I mean, I, on the building end, what I've seen, you know, I think these house, these batteries they have all, they're going to be in every house at some point. I think every house is going to end up with solar at some point. I wouldn't be surprised if New York State doesn't mandate it soon. I've already heard things where they're going to look to, if you build a new house, you have to put it on. Um, that being said, because I, I am you know concerned about infrastructure. The second part of that, we've had a bunch of applications come in. Um, some we like, some we don't like. There was one that came in for the... Uh, the Bay, uh, Novincento. Right. right. Novin Shraboko. Parking lot there. Right. Yeah. Right. And we went back and forth, back and forth. Eventually they got it that it wasn't the right place for solar. And they pulled the application. I think the other one right now that we're very concerned about is the one on Foothill Street. Because um, that's a, we feel is a large environmental impact. So we're very, very concerned about that one. Um, and so we sought out your board to approve the hiring of an environmental consultant. Because mm -hmm. I think what that's going to yield is that ultimately we have a pause deck on that, that application. And we're going to have to look very closely at the, at the solar and at the project. The other ones that have come in, I have to tell you, especially after going out and doing the site walks. Uh, for instance, I, I looked to the, the Alex, a resident who the family's had the property for 117 years. Mm -hmm. It's a farm. They struggle. You could see they struggle with, you know, obviously running a farm. So part of the area they want to turn into solar. And, you know, I said it at the last meeting that we had, you could tell these people are absolutely adamant about maintaining their property at the utmost um, of condition. They don't want it to look like hell. And I think we had, John, correct me if I misspeak, three solar uh, applications that have come in on farms, which weren't cutting down a lot of trees, mm -hmm. clearly going to be screened. Appropriate applications, we thought. IBM, another one, just made sense, really made sense. We have one at the uh, field home up near, the, uh, near the Panis School, another one that we did a site visit last week. Makes sense, appears to make sense. Again, you're going to have some applications that are no-brainers, and I think others that need tweaking. I think the, the landscaping law, and, and I got to thank John Tegeter and, and his office um, for all their help. I think we've been working through them. Um, so on my end, at least what I see is one, and I know it's a struggle, there's an absolute need for this, right? Because with everything coming down the pike, all the mandates, unfunded or otherwise, the electricity has got to come from somewhere. And then you have properties that are struggling in town. You know, do you let them, is it better that they develop houses or other, you know, things on these property or put the solar in? And I, I absolutely understand Councilman Diana's concern about the closeout of these projects because you don't want to see them go to mm -hmm. hell in a handbasket. Right, of right. Course. You know, I, you know, I, I think about properties that have gone, you know, I, I, every time I drive down the street past Acme and I see the old fireplace, you know, there's some things, you know, that just go bad and, and stay bad. You don't want to see that all over the place. Sure. Um, Rich, on the on the screening question. Yep. Uh, the requirement for yearly inspections, I think, makes a lot of sense. I think that's a great suggestion. Um, is that something that you can include within your approving resolution or is that something that you'd rather see changed in the law? If it's legal and I would look to, 
the council there. I, I have no problem putting it in the, any resolution. No, I mean, that's a reasonable condition. That would be a reasonable condition to place on your approving resolution. There, there's really no need for an amendment. Okay. One other, uh, one other thing that I, I had missed in Inc my notes Incidentally, here. incidentally, if screening is not being, if it's if it's necessary and not being adhered to, we'd probably hear about it before that year is up. I would think. Absolutely, you're you're, you're probably right. Right, Councilman. I don't mean to cut you off, but but Rich, in the case where screening isn't obtainable, how does the planning board handle that type of application? What are you dying? So uh, you, I would think like the shrub oak. Sure. We reduced it, reduced it to the point where they pulled the application. But it isn't, isn't screening, and maybe John, this is a better question for you, but, but under the law, screening is a requirement, correct? Screening is a requirement. In, however, in commercial areas, it's more, uh, there's a subjective, uh, there's subjectivity uh, in the planning board's deliberations when it comes to commercial. It must be screened adequately to residential areas not so much to uh, other commercial areas. So in the case of uh, the Shrub Oak one, they couldn't screen it really from anywhere, including the residential area that was uh, associated with across New Road. Um, there was, the board felt that it had a very high visual impact to the Hamlet as it related to the commercial area. So. Uh, the first iteration had uh, canopies that were right on the street. And every time you drove by there, that would be the dominant architectural okay. presence that you saw. Right. So the, the board has subjectivity, and I believe that they have the ability to deny an application if it is not done the proper screening, whether it be in commercial, you know, in commercial. Uh, in residential areas, if it's not adequately screened, I mean, there's, so, th those are written as a shall. Right. So in, in Councilman Diana's example, though, where he and his neighbor, right, and he's looking and he's having coffee on his on his back porch and his neighbor has ground mounts, it's it shall be screened. So the law requires that to be fully screened from Councilman Diana's view. Yes. That, that's, yeah, I think that's, some of these things will get boxed out. True. What's that, Rich? Some of them will get boxed out. You know, there's certain right. things, at, again, I'm looking at my time when I was a building inspector, there are things that people want to do that sometimes you can't do. And that's one of the downsides of the building department. You're constantly telling people no. Um, and that's the same thing, you know, and I, I don't know uh, Tom's property, but, you know, I, I, listen, I look at my own property. I screen the hell out of the Besides, no one's got solar, but if it's a flat piece of property, if I was on my deck, could I, you know, those are things that have to get looked at through the process. Right. And, and there, each, can, can I ask a question? Is yeah. anybody concerned with any of the, 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 the work that the planning board has been, uh, or any of the projects? No. Is anybody? No. Nope. No. Nope. No. Nope. 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 Any nope. issues I need to know about, at least on no, you know, no, their no. concerns about what we've been doing? No, Rich, this is kind of a uh, uh, things I've heard from people and kind of a personal thing that I, I, I went through the law and there was a couple things that I saw that needed to have um, uh, need a little tweaking, so to speak, um, and also to make it hopefully easier on you guys. So if you do come up with something like that, you can say, well, look, you got to do this, this, this and this. And this way it's in writing, because I found now in my time sitting on the board here, which is going on geez, I don't know, it's about seven years, that we're constantly reinventing the wheel, where if it's here and it's got a good foothold now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we're not constantly sending people out to fetch the Wicked Witch's broom. And this is one thing that, that I, I, I want to make you know perfectly clear, that I want to make sure that <coughs> we do this properly because I see a lot of the stuff that happens throughout the years. Of, and, and to be quite frank, um, this law was wonderful, but we had to put it together rather rapidly because we did have people coming in, if I'm not mistaken, John, right? And we, we did it in a, uh, it wasn't done in any way, shape or form in a haphazard manner, but there's things that are evolving now that we have to look into. 
and and increase it. It's just like, you know, putting up stop signs where they never were before, so to speak. It's just like uh, in this one particular paragraph here, the uh, abandonment and dis uh, decommissioning uh, letter G, subparagraph one. Um, the planning board at its sole discretion may require applicant to fire, file decommissioning bond prior to the issuance of any permits. Take me that, out. Should, that should be will, will yeah. require. Yeah, I agree. Um, um, and this way here, we can have a, a, a good foothold that this stuff is going to be taken down after its, after its useful life expectancy. Hey, I may not be here in 25 years. I don't know. I'd like to be, but um, if, if I'm not, at least the people that are here will have a, a, a good foundation to work with. Can I just have a, I just have a couple of questions. And my first question is for Rich Khan. Um, was it last week that we were, someone talked to us about uh, an application before the planning board for solar and the alleged, uh, the, the allegation was that the applicant was going to clear cut. Now it is my understanding that this that the environmental laws kick in when something like that comes before you. Am I correct? Yeah, you're probably talking about the foothill site. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's why we want to get that environmental study. Yeah. And I, yeah. I mean no disrespect, but I don't watch your board meetings. <laughs> Really? Um, no. <laughs> How come, Rich? <laughs> I, I, this is my second. This is my second town board meeting tonight. Uh, so, I, I, and I mean no disrespect, but yeah, Alice, I think it's probably the foothill site, and we are very concerned about the environmental aspects of that project. Yeah, but just because it may not be in the uh, the wording may not be in the 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 solar law. Um, Certainly, it refers to that. You've got to comply with whatever is there, right? You, with you, our have to, you have to comply with all of our laws, which include both the tree law, the wetland law. Nobody gets away from them. Thank you. I, Thank think, you, that, I think that's your right. question. Something right. for the, and, and yeah. the law. Yeah, and the I'm other, the I'm rich. not finished this now. Okay, but I, why my I'm not is coming? I understand more technology than everybody. Hey, pop, pop, pop. Don't tell me that one. I have a question specifically next. Council, Council, can we just let Councilman? So when you finish, finish, I will say. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No, it's okay. okay. Please, Councilman. Alice, please finish. Yeah, please, Alice, finish. Finish, yeah. Um, well, there was, I had a comment and then another question. And the comment was, um, I agree with you, Rich, because I do believe that we need to find um, power every time it begins to rain or the wind kicks up here, power goes out. And that's a problem. It's, you know, it's kind of like all of a sudden we don't have power anymore. And the last thing was, um, Tommy, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with your moratorium on, on these projects because I think there's a whole lot of of discussion, there's a there's a big discussion, um, particularly in upstate New York, about uh, the large solar projects. Yeah. Um, and it's not forever, Alice. It's just for just so we can wrap our head no, around I, what I, I bonding is and and get it redlined and so on and so forth. It's nothing that it's going to be done away with forever. It's just so John and I and Rich can work on it and and get it done once and right, hopefully. Well, as long as it doesn't stop those that they currently have before them, I'm good. Yeah, no, it's just that the new applicants would have to comply with whatever bonding issues are are maybe forthcoming for decommissioning, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Councilman Patel? Very good discussion today, but I have a one question for Rich and the entire board. Mm -hmm. You know, right now, power goes up, you have a you know, small generator, right? Mm -hmm. So you can survive. But now people are thinking way ahead that maybe they should have a small battery storage so you don't need the generator, you know? So this should be included. And, you know, it requires any environmental issue because, you know, the battery has to be safe and like that. Uh -huh. It can run your house for maybe, you know. Really? 
have to worry about the gas, gasoline, all these things, because sometimes you may be, you know, better off having batteries, really. And how large and all that, it can be, you know, it is already in the planning in many, many places like this, you know. So how the battery storage in the future in your home, how much you allow, how many kilowatts, you know, how large a battery is going to come. Because many people, now we already have the battery, you know, storage some places in the town, and there are some laws, and maybe we look parallel these two laws together, you know, and make it uh, safe. And environment we have that we have that in our battery storage law. So, yeah, Vishnu, you're home, right. Homeowners, how do you how do you separate from the commercial? It's by size, okay. size of the, size yeah. of the kilowatts. But you know what? What Vishnu just said, I had no idea you could do. So you know, I'm I'm. I'm grateful that, you know, we're having this discussion. I, I, has, has the board seen the Tesla house? No. no. I, I have, but I don't know if everyone else has. No. I, I, I saw the plans on it. I didn't see the actual I, I've house. been there, okay, last week. I, I, I think it, it would be very important uh, to take a look at this. This is a okay. project that came in front of the board. Um, and it, it's basically a Tesla house. It's got the the solar panels, the batteries, it's, you oh, know, wow. it's, okay. I, I, and John, correct me if I misspeak, but I think it's unique in, in New York State at this point, right? Um, I think it is one of two. I think they have, are producing one on Long Island, I believe. So, similar. York, yeah, so Yorktown has this Tesla house, which, I mean, think about this. This is one of two projects in the state of New York Yep. I was um, going to sh showcase where I, I really believe the building industry is headed, you know, and, and, and Vishnu, Councilman Patel is right. You know, the, I got to tell you, I think these, the more they outlaw the gas engines and the quicker it comes, mm -hmm. I, I see batteries in every house. The building code already deals with it. I'm sure the building, your building inspector has been to many of these classes already. Mm -hmm. so this is the way things are headed. It's going to be an, an energy independence especially with the, the single family residences because Con Edison is not out there putting in plants. They're not up in the oh, infrastructure. Okay. You know, it's, you could see it on any road. So yeah, I think it's going to fast and furious come at us. It sounds like yeah. a good board road trip. Yeah, you're, yeah, talking, I, you, you're absolutely sorry. right, John, um, or Rich rather. I, I uh, you know, I, in my trips upstate, I see where they, they absolutely have no idea. They just let them put the, the, um, the solar panels up right on a road edge, basically. And that's all you see as you're going up the road. Farmer has whatever acreage happens to be there. There they are, boom. And quite frankly, they're ugly. Um, and, and, you know, there's no screening, no anything. That's what kind of brought all this to mind with me. I said, God, this is, this is ridiculous. I don't even like the way this looks. I'd hate to be going up Route 6. And because it's a commercial piece of property, mm -hmm. they, you don't have to screen it from Route 6. You know, that kind of thing. So... <clears throat> or when the trees die, they're not replanted or whatever happens to be put up there for screening. Um, so um, that's what kind of prompted this whole thing. I, I, I think you're right. I think that solar is going to be, if not 100%, it's still going to be a high percentage out there. Um, and, it, and it brings with it its, its wonderful stuff. And it also brings with it its yeah. stuff that's not so great, like when our firefighters have to go take care of a house that's fully battery, and how do they do that if it's a house fire, but that's a whole other conversation. Um, They're actually but, trained. That's part of the law. They have to be trained. Right. To the fire. And there's also fire suppressant mechanisms included. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, you know, I, I have an answer to the questions, you know. If you yeah, the, um, it's just like the Tesla car. A uh, friend of mine upstate, Two, two lads had an accident in the car. They both died. They both burned to death in a Tesla car. Could they burn to death in a gas car? Sure. But um, uh, what had happened was the one fellow got out, tried to get his partner, who was the owner, out of the passenger seat. Right. Couldn't get him, and he burned, he, he burned to death in the car. But from what I understand now from talking with the fire departments, with these lithium-ion batteries, the only thing that puts them out is copious amounts of water. So um, and then where does that product go is it toxic who knows like i say but that's a whole other discussion right now uh, the one thing john did mention to me though with regard to um 
clear cutting, uh, Alice, to your point was you take the hill property up there and that probably more trees and correct me if I misspeak here, John, probably more trees would come down with the at the hill property for the housing that they wanted to put in then will come down with the um, solar panels. Okay. Well, Am I right well, there, John? Well, I, I'm not going to single out any any individual property. I, I can tell you that uh, there are three applications that are removing, you know, pr uh, proposing to remove trees. Mm -hmm. uh, we ask each of them to go and compare what a, for instance, if they're in a residential zone, what a subdivision would look like and how many trees would need to be removed, how much disturbance there would be. Uh, so that's a matter of course. Uh, two of them have done that already. One is mm -hmm. a little bit newer and hasn't. Uh, the two that have done it are either at the same amount of disturbance and tree removal as the development would be. So it is an either or situation. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also, so it's not as, let's, let's, I want to be clear. You're going to have these pieces of property that are searching for development so that they have return on their investment of the ownership of the land. And it's a matter of vetting them properly and choosing something that, uh, to the extent that we can actually choose something that works best for the citizens of Yorktown. Um, so tree removal is not the only consideration, not the only environmental consideration, but it is a big one. I'm not diminishing that in any sense, but that's what right. we've been doing. We've been comparing the tree removal from solar on a piece of property to whatever uh, a, a development would be, or if there was a previously um, proposed development. The other thing I, I want to mention, clear cutting is a term that I think has connotations that I don't think um, are necessarily apt, really. Um, clear cutting. Yeah, clear cutting is, uh, we had one happen 15, 20 years ago. Uh, a gentleman took all the trees down on all on, on, the, on the entire property and certainly yeah. I think that would qualify as clear cutting. I think these applications already, the three that we have are are targeted for certain areas and not it's not clear cutting the entire properties. Mm -hmm. They are leaving areas that they can do screening. They are leaving forested areas, uh, all of them. Um, but some of the trees need need to come down in order to do that proposal. So I think that's the uh, the facts of those particular uh, I think, um, properties. I think sometimes people use the terminology not, I'm going to believe not so much as to kind of want to hoodwink people, but so that they could get your attention, <laughs> knowing that it's not clear cutting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, I, I, I happen to notice in here that uh, in the decommissioning plan, um, a cost estimate detail, and, and I didn't see this one before. I, I must have skipped over looking for something else. Cost estimate detailing the project cost of um, executing decommissioning plan shall be prepared by a professional engineer or contractor. Cost estimate shall take into effect, into account inflation. Yeah, it's so right there. we already have it there. I, and I, I never, I didn't see that. Um, but what we have to do now is to make sure our bonds cover the decommissioning should the person not file fall through, the company goes out of business, um, the owner of the property doesn't do the right thing with regard to, to contracts and so on and so forth. And we, the town people, end up with this mess. So you guys have got to write it up. Okay. All right. I have a one question. The last question is for Rich. Uh, you know, one is a solar cell that they have a solar concentrator. It's like you, you put the, the lens and increase the energy level, you know? So you, you, you flow the antifreeze containing the liquid and you heat up the water. Then you have hot water in case the power goes up, it can last for one or two days. And, and, and then the next thing is, uh, you know, you have a solar cell, we have electricity and hot water, you know. So these things come out, and it is being used. You know, I, 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 there is somebody who has a house 
more than 50 years ago, and he he's u- using the hot water right here in uh, you know across the police station. He has a house like that. You know? Oh yeah, the uh, town of Greenberg, uh, our uh, Theater Young Community Center, years back got a grant to put solar on the uh, the roof of the structure to heat water for the pool, the interior pool. Yeah. So it's it's been out there for a while, and you know again. I just ask you all, take a look at this Tesla house. Um, you know, I, I think that the building world is really grabbing onto this because there's money to be made okay. here. And a lot of these states are starting to mandate things. And, you know, again, unfunded or otherwise, this is the way things are headed. I mean, I, I forget what the date is, but New York State, if it's 2030 or somewhere in that time frame, it's 2030. They, it's 2030. Yeah, no more new, you know, uh, Combustion cars, it's got to be electric. They're allow- I think they're allowing you to keep what you have. Um, well, I think what he said was that step by uh, 2030, 70% of our electricity has to be. Um... I have a question for the, uh, you know, Councilman Diana. They have a new kind of a battery, you know, the lithium hydride, but there are other components in that one. So, the, the carbon, you know, the waste carbon, you know, like a powder, and they are in a, some kind of a polymeric emulsion. So the lithium ion and uh, and 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 uh, uh, hydride, you know, they're coming out of there. The reaction with the water, they 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 are like insulated. You know, you have a power, right? But mm-hmm. insulator allows them, so you don't get a shock. And you know, they work with the conductor. And, and works in the other way as an insulator. Those things are already known. You know, there was a Nobel Prize given two years ago to the British scientists. They have created new kind of solar cells. You know, and it's really wonderful. You know, for the battery, battery charging. Yeah. So just computer batteries and like that. You know, do you remember they used to blow? It's not blow anymore now. You know, it's just like you know you have a bucket of water. It just get does not work mm-hmm. like that. You know, it's five foot off right away. You know. Yeah. So I guess what I'm asking uh, the board is. Um, just if we could put forward like just like a 60 a, up to a 60 day uh, moratorium on, on, on new projects, not not the ones that are already here so that we John and myself and Rich can go through this law and just, you know, fine tune it a little bit to make sure that the town and the town's people are covered. And so that we're 100 percent sure that in 25 years, like I say, I don't know if I'll be around, but I get, Matt will probably be around. Um, you know, they don't have to look at these things that are just sitting there not doing anything. Okay, so you're going to have to write that up, Tommy, as 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 part of a local law. Okay, as you mean the um, um, moratorium. The moratorium. Okay. Yeah. Okie doke. And I'll have that for next Tuesday, I guess. Okay. Uh, so if, I, if I could, Supervisor, I just want to take the opportunity to thank the board for one. Uh, the ability to get a traffic consultant when we need them now to check the projects. I think that was very forward thinking. I think it's going to really help also on the environmental end. You guys gave us the ability to, to, you know, through your approval to hire, uh, you know, environmental consultants to look at these projects, which again, is really going to help. I got to tell you, I know he's on, but he's muted. Dan CRC has been a great help at the board meetings. John is always a great help as a gym. You've got a great group of professionals and, uh, you know, I think you guys, especially with these consultants have really helped us to get things done quickly and I'm more, so more efficiently. So Thanks, thank Richard. Thank I'm you. going to tell Dolly not to be so mean to you. All right. I like Dolly. <laughs> Dolly is the best. <laughs> Dolly is the best. You love Dolly. And Rich, I did, as a liaison, I did share that you thank the board for the traffic and the thank environment. Thank you. I, I, I can't tell you, it really is going to be a help. I mean, I already helped on the one Taco Bell application. You know, we're bringing the environmental consultants. I think you guys approved one for uh, one of the projects we're looking at for solar. So, you know, I think that that was, that was the mo- one of the most important things we did because, you know, we're oftentimes given those studies. And who's there to interpret the study but John? <laughs> John does everything and it's kind of like that's not his area of expertise <laughs> you know so I'm glad that the board did that as well 
Thank you, Rich, for coming over to our meeting. Yeah, thanks, Rich. Anytime. At your service. Thanks, Rich. Keep up the great work. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. Thanks, John. Have a good night. Thank you, good night. Right. So thank we're you go John. And... Thanks, John. We're going to go on and end with resolutions. We have a resolution from the engineering department to authorize the town clerk to advertise bids. These include a bid for various chemicals for the water pollution control plant, as well as a bid for grit and screenings removal for the water pollution control plant, and a bid for sludge and grease removal for the water pollution control plant. From the highway department, we authorize the comptroller to release escrow deposit for street opening permit 021-010. From the planning department, we authorize Barton and Judas to perform an environmental review for the Schifatelli CDG solar project proposed site plan, as well as authorize Barton and Judas to perform an um, excuse me to perform an environmental review for the Foothill Solar proposed site plan. From the water department. Authorize Yorktown Water Department to deem vehicle obsolete and be scrapped at the Brookfield Metal. Authorize the uh, Water Department to have Quinlan Street water storage tanks inspected. We're also going to authorize the Water Department to bid for the automotive and small engine parts and equipment tools. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motions Good. carry. With that, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Um, motion to adjourn. Hold on one second. Can I oh, just clarify on. one thing? Yes, the ma resolution for the automotive and small engines, um, if you look on the bottom, it says that he would like to extend it for one year. So he wants to extend the... So it's to extend the, the bid, not to authorize, right? Is that what you're saying? Right. Yes. So, okay. Right. So it's a motion to... So the resolution should be to extend the bid for the automotive okay. and small engine parts and equipment tools. Thank you. It's fine. Thank you very That's much. That's fine, even better. All right, and with that, motion to adjourn. We have a first, I thought we had a second, right? Yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Good night, Yorktown. Thank you. Good night, you all. Good night. Thank you. Good night.